get that. I didn't want to keep my comments. Well,
Thank you. Seated. Good morning. Good morning. It is Wednesday, October 5, 2022. This is another day of uh, trial in the case of State of Ohio plaintiff versus George Washington Wagner, the fourth defendant, case number 2018, CR 155. The defendant is present in court today with his attorneys, John Parker and Richard Nash. The state is represented by prosecuting attorney Rob Junk and special prosecuting attorneys Angela Canepa and Andrew Wilson, Ryan Scheider, special agent with B uh, Ohio BCI and I is also present. Is counsel for both sides ready to have the jury brought up? Yes. seated. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. It's good to see you all here as we begin another day of trial. Um, we're the state side of the case. Is the state ready to call another witness? Uh, yes, Your Honor, we are. All right, can you call, do that please, then? Um, thank you, Your Honor. The state would call Special Agent John Jenkins to the state. you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, as you shall answer unto God? I do. You see this there? And the state may uh, present. Thank you, Your Honor. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good. How are you? Um, could you please state your name for the record? Sure. It's uh, Jonathan Jenkins. Okay. And... Mr. Jenkins, can you tell us um, where you are employed? I'm currently employed with the Ohio Bureau of Criminal Investigation, uh, which is commonly referred to as Ohio BCI. Okay. And what is your um, current assignment? So currently I'm assigned as a narcotics uh, special agent uh, with BCI, which uh, basically my responsibilities are working uh, felony level uh, narcotics uh, crimes investigations in uh, southeast Ohio. 
And how long have you worked for BCI? So I began my employment with Ohio BCI in 2006. At that point in time, I was a crime scene agent. I worked in the crime scene field for approximately four years. And then I transferred over to the narcotics unit. Um, worked there for approximately two years before I transferred on to the special investigations unit, uh, where I've been uh, employed for probably about the last 10 years. And then at the beginning of 2022, I transferred back into the narcotics unit. And can you tell us, um, what did you do before you started your employment with BCI in 2006? In 1998, I started my uh, civilian law enforcement career with the Washington County Sheriff's Office, which is located in uh, Marietta, Ohio. Um, I started out there as a corrections officer and worked my way up through a road patrol deputy and then, then to a, a detective. Um, and then I left the Washington County Sheriff's Office in 2006 when I started with Ohio BCI. So during your time as an investigator for Washington County Sheriff's Office, did you, uh, what kinds of offenses did you investigate? So um, as a detective with the Sheriff's Office, I was assigned to uh, general cases. So usually at the felony level, uh, which included the murders, rapes, robberies, uh, sex offenses, um, high level thefts and things like that. And can you tell us, um, and then as an agent in um, the Special Investigations Unit, what kind of uh, offenses would you investigate? So uh, there are various types of units at, at BCI, and I've mentioned a few of them. The Crime Scene Unit, which basically is the uh, agents that go out and process crime scenes, take photographs, collect evidence, and things like that. Um, the narcotics unit, which I'm currently assigned to, is again um, usually higher level um, uh, narcotics investigations um, dealing with uh, the dealers and, and suppliers of, of narcotics into a, a local area. And then the special investigations unit is more of the, um, the agents that go out and actually knock on doors, um, conduct interviews, um, look at the evidence in the case, and kind of put the case together. Um, presented to the, uh, the prosecutor's office and, and things like that. So the, those types of crimes that we get involved in at, at BCI include the murders, uh, rapes, robberies, um, officer-involved shootings, um, public of official corruption, and, and those types of crimes. And can you tell us um, a little bit about your education? Um, did you go to college? If so, where? And, and what degree did you obtain? So I uh, graduated from the University of Dayton with a Bachelor of Science degree uh, with a major in criminal justice, and uh, that was in 1996. Um, I also have some education experience from the U.S. military. I was in the military police. Um, I served approximately eight and a half years uh, in, the, in the United States Army Reserves and was honorably discharged as a, as a captain. Um, my civilian law enforcement uh, education started with the Ohio State Highway Patrol, where I attended the uh, basic academy, which is a little bit different from what the troopers would go through, but it's a, a basic academy for um, regular police officers and, and deputy sheriffs. Okay. And did you obtain a, a peace officer certificate? Yes, I did. And since that time, um, since you first began your employ employment, your career in law enforcement, um, have you received ongoing training as part of your work? Yes, so um, we have continuing education and several different types of advanced law enforcement training that um, agents can attend. I've attended in excess of um, um, about 1,700 hours, um, different topics that include death investigation, um, homicide investigations, um, interviewing and in interrogation techniques, um, obviously crime scene processing, narcotics investigative uh, investigation work, officer-involved shooting investigations, and uh, various types of, of uh, different topics um, related to law enforcement investigations. Okay. And during your assignment um, with the Special Investigations Unit, or SIU, 
Um, was there a certain area that you were assigned to? Yes, yeah, so um, at that point in time, we were uh, divided in the state into uh, uh, quarters. So there was the, the southeast part of the state, the southwest part of the state, northwest and northeast. I was assigned to the southeast portion of the state, which covered approximately 23 counties. Um, Washington County, where, where I live currently, and then also um, Pike County is, is part of that um, area that I was assigned to work in. And as a part of your um, job requirements, do you also provide testimony to uh, jurors when there is a trial in one of your cases? Yes, I do. Okay. And can you tell us, um, Special Agent Jenkins, as part of your um, work, you were employed in the SIU unit in 2016, is that correct? That's correct, yes. Because you just went back to the narcotics at the beginning of this year? Correct. Okay. And can you tell us, as during that time in April of 2016, were you one of the agents that was assigned to investigate uh, the eight-person homicide involving the rodents? Yes, I was. Okay. And can you tell us what the nature of that was when you first um, came on board, how you, uh, what your initial involvement was? Yes, I, I was involved in that uh, investigation from day one, um, right, as, right soon after the call came in. Um, I was uh, called by my supervisor at the time and asked to respond um, to the Pike County area in, in reference to the murders that occurred. Okay. And do you recall um, where you first went to that day or what you did? Yes, yeah, so initially um, we decided uh, the, the plan was made to have a, sort of a, a command post at the Piketon Police Department. So initially, uh, that first day and, and maybe the first uh, few weeks afterwards, we responded to the, the Pike County Police Department, and that's kind of where we uh, kind of served as our headquarters, where um, everybody would meet in the mornings. We'd kind of brief on, on the, uh, the task that we're, we needed to complete that day, who all needed to be investigated, and, and things like that. Okay. And... Um, regarding that very first day, um, did you have a particular assignment? So uh, during the first day, um, we, were, we were breaking everybody up, all the agents that responded into the different um, crime scenes. So uh, we knew that we had four separate crime scenes, and, and each agent at that point in time was um, more or less assigned to a particular uh, crime scene to work with that crime scene agent. Um, who was who was processing uh, that particular scene? Okay. Um, and were you assigned to a particular scene that day? Yes, I was. Um, the scene that I was assigned to was the um, Frankie Roden and the, the Hanny, Hannah Gilly uh, crime scene. Okay. Referenced as scene two, correct? That's correct. Yes. Okay. And. Special Agent Jenkins, um, did you remain on this case throughout um, the investigation? Yes, I did. I uh, responded to Pike County on, on basically a daily basis uh, for several months um, uh, after the initial, the initial call came. Okay. So you indicated there was initially a command post at Piketon Police Department, correct? That's correct, yes. And then did that uh, switch at some time? That's correct, yes. Okay. And do you recall the other locations? That yes, so um, after a period of time, we decided to move to the uh, Hatzel Chemical um, uh, Warehouse, which was vacated at the time. Um, there were uh, some office spaces available uh, that provided more area, more room for all the investigators to meet on a, on a daily basis. Okay. Without disrupting the function of the Piketon Police Department as well? That's correct, yes. Okay. And did that ultimately then switch out to um, the A plant? Yes, that's correct. And can you tell us when you were responding on a, a daily basis down to Pike County, um, what kinds of tasks were you performing? So mostly during those, the, the initial days and weeks uh, following the murders, Several um, uh, tips were coming in. Um, with those tips, we developed more individuals that needed to be interviewed. 
So basically during this point in time, there were uh, several interviews that uh, we were conducting on a daily basis and just following up on some of the tips that were coming in and that was pretty much the, the nature of our, our work during the, the initial phases. Okay. A lot of people involved from BCI. That's correct, yes. Okay. And can you tell us, as part of those, um, that interviewing process, was there a time where you wanted to speak to an individual known as Billy Wagner? Yes, there was. And can you tell us why you wanted to speak with Mr. Wagner? Sure. So uh, one of the major things that you, you have to do um, during a murder investigation, um, especially when there's an individual that's been you know, uh, uh, killed in, a, in such a cowardly manner and you have no idea who, who any suspects may or may not be, is trying to find out as much as you can about that individual, the, the victim that's deceased. A lot of times talking with family, coworkers, friends, and things like that will give you a lot of insight into the type of person that he or she was and, and maybe lead you down a road to a, 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 a suspect or some clues or, or some different types of evidence like that. So with uh, the case of Billy Wagner, it was really no different. Uh, we knew Billy was the uh, uh, grandfather of Sophia, um, who was the daughter of Hannah Roden. So obviously being a family member, that's somebody that we needed to, to talk to. Um, the Roden family, when she get to know them, uh, a very large family. So, um, you know, if one person was, was murdered, uh, two or three agents or two or three investigators might be able to do that victimology of finding out as much as you can about this individual in a fairly short time. But when you have eight people uh, that's been murdered, it, it kind of pushed us back a little bit on our time frame on getting everybody talked to. So we were eventually able to, to talk to Billy. Um, and we're, we were just really wanting to ask him questions about how he knew the rodents, how he knew Chris Roden, how he knew Hannah, and uh, get a little bit of insight. And that task became difficult due to the fact that when we stopped by the house, um, Billy wasn't always there. If we went to his mother's house at the Flying W, um, Billy wasn't always there, or if he was, he wasn't answering the phone. So it became um, quite a consuming task until finally we were able to um, track him down and, and, and get an interview with him. Okay. So when you indicated that you would um, stop by the house, um, what house are you referring to? Sure. So the, the house I'm referring to is the, the house that the, the Wagners were living in on the Peterson Road. And when you stopped there, you indicated that he wasn't home. Were other would other individuals be home? On occasions, there would be some. Uh, uh, Angela might be there. I did talk to Angela at one point in time. Um, but usually, we stopped by, nobody would answer, answer the door, or they weren't home. Okay. And when you stopped by and Angela was there, would you let her know that you were looking for Billy? Correct, yes. Okay. And you indicated you also checked at um, his mother's. What made you check at his mother's? Well, there was some inf information that maybe Billy wasn't always staying at Peterson Road, that maybe he was also staying at the, the Flying W Ranch uh, where he was taking care of his elderly um, father. Okay. And were you able to make contact with him at that location? No, we were not. Okay. Uh, not you initially. Okay. Yeah. Did you make contact with him, uh, with anybody else that was at the Flying W? Yes. Yeah, so his mother would be there at, at times and then also his sister. And did you also let them know that you were looking for Billy? Yes, we did. Yeah. And you indicated that um, because he was a family member um, of the victims um, or was the grandfather of one of the victims' child, um, that that was one of the reasons you wanted to talk to him? That's correct, yes. And, and were there, at the time that you interviewed him, were there other reasons? Yes, yeah, so um, not only did we want to talk to him because of the fact of his relationship 
uh, with, with Sophia and, and Hannah, but also we had started to, at this time, um, started to get tips and leads that there might have been some issues with some custody um, reference Sophia. Yeah, well, all right. The contents of the tip, I, I will, uh, I will sustain the objection to that, and the jury will disregard the contents of the tip. In fact, he had a tip, and that's why he went to speak with him. The court will permit. Okay. Um. Were you finally able to um, obtain an interview with Billy Wagner? Yes, we were. Okay, and just for the record. Uh, Billy Wagner also, his birth name is George Washington Wagner III, correct? That's correct, yes. But he goes by Billy. Correct. Okay. And can you tell us how that interview came to be? Sure. So um, at that point in time on this particular day, um, I, got, I received a call from Special Agent Mike Trout, who advised me that he was able to make contact with Billy Wagner. Um, during this uh, telephone conversation, Billy said he was going to the Kroger's here, here in Waverly, Ohio, to pick up some groceries for his father, and that we could meet him there in the parking lot. And did you then travel to the uh, parking lot? Yes, so uh, Special Agent Trout and I, uh, we met at the Kroger parking lot, and then we were able to make contact with uh, Mr. Wagner at that time. And where did you interview him? Was it in a vehicle? Was it out in the parking lot? Tell us about that. Sure. So um, once, once Agent Trout and I met, um, then we, we saw Billy um, walking out of the uh, grocery store. Um, Agent Trout went over and made contact with him, asked him if he would be willing to speak with us inside of uh, uh, Agent Trout's assigned vehicle. So at that point in time, Agent Trout was driving a, uh, a Ford Taurus, and we met out in the parking lot out in front of the uh, Kroger's. Um, uh, Agent Trout sat in the driver's seat, um, Mr. Wagner sat in the front passenger seat, and then I sat in the rear passenger seat. And that's where the interview took place. And was this interview with Billy Wagner um, recorded? Yes, it was audio uh, recorded. And after um, the interview is recorded, do you preserve that recording and is that kept with the investigative file? Yes, of course it is, yes. Okay. At this time, Your Honor, I would like to play that recording for the jury. Yes. <laughs>
All right. I'm going to overrule the objection. But ladies and gentlemen, the, this, uh, the information that you, that you may hear on this uh, tape is not being introduced to establish the truth of the matters asserted. It's being introduced for a limited purpose, and that is to explain steps taken by the investigator subsequent to this interview and why those steps were taken. State's Exhibit FF1. Yes. Cold stuff. He says he's gonna start his truck and turn the AC on. <laughs> Special Agent Trout. Stop. You want to just hop in the front seat over here? Just thumb picked up. Fuck the electrical tape. Get in here. I don't know if you're going to fit in here. Oh, I from This is John Jenkins. He's another agent with Nice us. to meet you. you um, Billy, we don't want to take up too much of your time, and, yeah. and I appreciate you, you meeting with me, and I know that you got groceries and stuff like that. But, um, you know, we just want to talk to you. Oh, I got about, the air conditioner on, so don't worry about it. Okay. I just want to talk with you about the, the road murders, okay? Uh -huh. And so, um, you know, we've been uh, out talking with people, you know, all kinds of, you know, tips get called in our office and all this stuff. and and. We saw where uh, you know you've been talking with Chris and yeah, I talk to him every day. Yeah, and and all that stuff, and we you know we talk with Jake and yeah, and all that, and and so uh, just your name has come up and you know in tips and things like that. So we just want to talk. Right, that's fine. Whatever you want to know. 
So, but the one thing I just want to tell you is, look, you know, we, we tell this to everybody. Look, just be honest with us. I'll tell you whatever I can do to help okay. you out. And we're not concerned about anything other than the murder. So, you okay. know, we've, we've talked with different people. Different people have different involvement. You know, you know you've, you've read the paper. Uh, you know, you've seen the news. I'm you know. not worried about all that. I'll tell you whatever you need to know. Okay, I'm just saying, you know, there was grows I'm there. Gonna, there was I'm, I'm going to tell you something, though, right off the bat. Okay. You didn't know, Chris, right? Okay. Most of the shit they're talking about was a bunch of bullshit lies. Okay. I mean, Chris, he'd give you the shirt off his back. Well, we've heard that. You know, he's he. You know, he was absolutely. You know, there wasn't nobody else like him. Okay. You know. Well, and 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 you know, so that so that you understand from our standpoint too. Yeah. We've talked with all kinds of people. Yeah. Everybody has a, you know a story. We've yeah. been getting consistent stories out of people. You know, we hear that there was different business ventures that he was involved in. You know, you've heard the news and stuff like that about the growth yeah. and all that stuff. You know, and all that. And so, listen, I just want you to understand, we don't care about let me, that let, stuff. Let me ask you something real quick. Okay. All right, now, are you with, are you from around here? Or are you from, like, Columbus? No, I'm, actually, both John and I are, are from southeast Ohio. Okay. So we, we work for BCI. So you're but, not affiliated with the sheriff's department around here? No, we are not affiliated with the sheriff's right. office around so here. What do you want to know? Okay, well, and, and you know, so I just want you to know, just, just be honest with this. If you were involved with Chris and anything...
correct if we stopped at 512 and then hit like 512? Thing that, you know, might have, you know, been criminal and stuff like uh, that. Uh, we don't care. Uh, uh, well, uh, right. But I wasn't because, you know, Chris was my best friend. Uh -huh. All right. Me and him, you know, we, we run around all the time. Mm -hmm. But one thing about Chris, Chris don't tell her. He didn't tell nobody nothing. Mm -hmm. He kept his business to himself. And I'm going to tell you straight up, I don't care what he done. He was my friend. He, okay. he done everything for me. Okay. You know, and Chris and me was exact opposites, okay? okay. Chris growed up hard. Mm -hmm. I mean, scrounged for everything he had, worked his ass off, and he worked every day. Mm -hmm. You know, he shit they're making him out like some damn big gangster, bunch of shit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And, and that's now, why we wanted to talk with the you. The other thing, you know, he wasn't no saint. Absolutely, okay, yeah. but Chris never hurt nobody. Mm -hmm. And uh, the thing is, you know, Chris don't he he, he don't talk okay about anything like that. I mean, me and him, you know, Chris growed up hard, and I didn't. Okay, right. You know, mom and my mom and dad's always you know pretty well, you know, whatever. But uh, you know, we all we just hit it off, and he, mm -hmm. but. Uh, I don't know what to, you know. How long have you known Chris? When did you, when, when did you guys first become friends? Well, shoot, eight, ten years ago. Eight, ten years ago. Yeah. Where did you meet him at? Vance Walls. Vance Walls? Yeah. Okay. So, uh... And Vance is in there for the same shit. Yeah. Know. Well, I mean, look. Let me tell you something. You know, Chris wasn't, you know, my best friend. He's probably the only friend, mm -hmm. all right? And, you know... I know everybody. Mm -hmm. Everybody, you know, knows me. Mm -hmm. And you ain't gonna throw a rock in this damn county and not hear somebody was doing something. Right. So if you're not gonna, you know, associate with somebody because of what they're doing, you're not gonna talk to anybody. Right. Right. Okay. No, I understand that. And you know. Everything. So and you know, Vance, yeah, he's in prison. Understand what was going on with that over dope deal and yeah, stuff yeah, like that, yeah. and and dope coming in and stuff like that. And you know, we can we can tell that they were friends and stuff like that. So yeah. you're not telling us. Yeah. And some of that stuff you're not telling us anything that okay. we didn't know. So, so you met him about eight, ten, uh, ten yeah. years ago through Vance. Yeah. So, and so him and Vance were running around together, probably dealing with. I don't know about, nothing about that. I don't know. Anything. I don't know what they do for you know. I don't get into other people's business. Okay. So, um, you're saying that in the entire time that you know Chris, that. You know, basically, you didn't know that he was selling dope? I ain't saying nothing like that. Okay. okay. I ain't saying I did, I ain't saying I didn't. But I'm saying I don't care what he did. Right. No, I understand okay. that. Look, listen, here, here's, we're not, you know, a couple things so that you understand from us. Number one, we're not trying to disparage Chris whatsoever or anything about his name or anything of what he was doing. All we ever care about is... Well, I'm going to tell you something. Murders. It took you long enough to come talk to me. One. And the other thing I'm worried, kind of upset and worried about, you know, it's, what, six months? Mm -hmm. I mean, the way things are today, I mean, you can go in anywhere mm -hmm. and tell exactly who's been in there in the last six, you know, mm -hmm. in nothing. No, right. right now, no, who's been there, who ain't. Well, we've you know, talked to a lot of people, but, you know, there's certain things about the investigation we're not going to go into. I don't mean to know nothing about, about that, but here's the thing. You know, you know, you hear a bunch of bullshit rumors and stuff, but I can tell you this right now. Y'all are, you know, this shit you're thinking, you know, it was a family. You, that's bullshit, mm -hmm. okay? What well, none of his family members? Mm -hmm. I can guarantee, you know, like Bobby not, Joe, you know, Bobby Joe, she's a lunatic, mm -hmm. but there's no way in hell. No, we understand that, and there's certain things like, there's, and so that you understand, there's a lot of people out here that talk, all right? Well, most of them lying. Most of them, I would agree with you, are lying or don't know what's going on. Okay, well, what do you want, what do you want to know, and I'll try my best to help you. Well, number one, we hear that he was having problems with people. Did, you, did he ever express to you who okay. he was having problems with? No, Chris wouldn't have told me he was having problems with anybody. Well, anybody but he did tell me he was having problems with, you know. If somebody was, you know, I thought was picking on him, you know, I wouldn't have. <clears throat> been sitting around. I don't like, you know, he's the same way with me. Mm -hmm. You don't understand. I mean, he, he, uh, you know, he, he's the only person, you know, I ever met like him. Mm -hmm. You know, he just, no, I understand. but, uh, the beginning of that week, 
okay? I went down and took him lunch, all right? And uh, we were joking about at there. At house? No, down there at the lake. At the lake? He's working at the lake. Him and Gary and that, uh, shit, that boy works for him. Uh, I don't know his name. Uh, he's a dud. Um, you know where he lives? I, uh, I know his mom lives out on Camp Creek, and I think he lives down around Portsmouth somewhere. Uh, he, he worked, you, you got to know who I'm talking about. Shannon? Uh, what's his last name? Miller. Miller. Uh, like real bad dope head? Yeah. Yeah. He was down there, and uh, him and Gary was over working. Chris came over. Something been bugging him, all right, straight up for a while. And I, I got down there, and I, gave, he, I told him I was going to get some ribs and come down. We were going to eat lunch. And I said, you want me to bring Gary and that other boy something? He's like, yeah, still get him a damn cheeseburger. And <laughs> he worked up and down. But Gary, you know, Gary is it. And uh, I got him all the and we went down there. And me and Chris was sitting in the truck. And, uh, you know, he was, I was like, man, what the hell is going on? You're acting like, you know, what, what the fuck's up with you? Right. And he's like, there ain't nothing fucking wrong with me. Okay, he said everybody thinks something's wrong with me, mm -hmm. and he said even Robin thought I was mad about something, mm -hmm. you know, and he was acting weird all that week, but I, he never said why. Because Chris, if you got him to say three words in a day, you were flying. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. but um, he, uh, you know, he just wasn't acting right that day, and then. Uh, the day after that, and everybody thought he was pissed off because Christopher was smoking spice. And that was bullshit. Christopher, you know, common sense. Why the fuck would he smoke that shit? Mm -hmm. I mean, right. really. Right. You know, that's common sense. Right. But Chris, somebody told him that, and everybody thought he was pissed off about that. But I don't believe that's what he was upset about because he, he got, Chris didn't drink much, all mm -hmm. right? He very seldom. Mm -hmm. He got real drunk, and he's running up and down a damn road. And uh, I caught up with him, and down there at the bottom of Union Hill, and I begged him, you know, got him to go back to the house. I said, man, you're going to get a fucking DUI, you're going to bring, you're gonna get all kind of shit, going to cost you 10000 I said, let's go back to the fucking house. I said, come on, let's go. Do so you we, remember what day that was? It was like middle of the week. Middle of the week? Yeah, middle of the week. And uh, then uh, other night, I got him back to the house, and, you know, he was just... You know, he just wasn't acting himself. And, uh, but after that, you know, about, you know, about all into that. And uh, I talked to him, last time I talked to him, and he seemed all right, was uh, the night before all that bullshit happened. I called him, it was like 8, 9 o'clock, me and Sophie called him. Sophie's my granddad, but his right. too. Right. And she wanted to tell him night she loved him, and we were sitting there bullshitting about a little bit. They talked that long. <laughs> And I said, hey, man, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And then next morning, you know, all hell broke loose. Mm -hmm. so, um, <clears throat> so you talked to him, you know, on Monday. You took him, you took him lunch. Well, I, was, I don't know if it was Monday or not. Okay, no, or, okay earlier in the week. Yeah. But you're saying that, you know. My memory ain't worried shit. My sugar's like 400 right now. Okay. Oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> that fucking diabetes shit. Mm -hmm. um, it's bullshit, trust yeah. me. Yeah. But, but as best as you can remember, you, you talked with him earlier in the week because you took him lunch, and you could tell that he was acting a little bit different. But yeah, when he you was asked, just asking yeah, about it. He basically said yeah, nothing, yeah, was wrong. nothing was wrong. All right. But like I said, Chris don't talk. All right. right? He just don't. He don't tell nobody nothing. Mm -hmm. So, um, so then you end up running him down. How'd you find out that he was drinking and at the bottom of Union Hill? He talked to me, and I called him. Oh, you called him? And he talked to him, and he said he was out running around. I caught up with him, and I mean, you know, he was pretty well splattered. Mm -hmm. And he didn't say anything about what was going no, on then? That no, no, and drink? then, you know. But you said you didn't Frank normally and, drink. Yeah, no, he don't normally drink. And Chris and uh, Christopher and Frank, he was up there and stuff. And Chris, you know, took Christopher's car and had it sitting up there at the house. And, you know, they were just, you know, in a big, his, his kids, they, they just absolutely, they drive him crazy. But right. he was a good dad. He took good care of them, mm -hmm. you know. And so. And he tried to keep them out of trouble. So that would have been the last time you saw him and then the last time you talked to him. No, that wasn't the last time. I don't think I thought, no. I don't know if that was before or after I was down there. I think it was after, yeah. But I don't think that was the last time I saw him, saw him. Okay, but you said that you talked to him last on the night before 
Right. So if you want to tell yeah, him. Yeah, right before the night before all that shit happened, yeah. Okay. So then you That was the last him. time I talked to him, yeah, but I, but I was on the phone. Okay, but he never he never said anything to you no, then? Nothing never like said, that, never, never expressed said any problems? No. Because, you know, what's interesting is... I mean, how come, how come the feds and the DEA ain't in on this? Well, because right now, I mean, with with us, they're working with us on it, but we're still the lead on the investigation, and and the sheriff's office is helping out. But the feds and the DEA are both involved in it. You know, they you know they ought to be able to figure something out. Well, you know, we we've, we've figured out a lot of stuff so far, but like what we're also trying to do is, is and, and you know, we've had like over 800 tips come in, and so some of this yeah, we have to follow yeah. up on some of that stuff. Okay, and I want to tell you something that's like, you know, you hear 50,000 bullshit cool. things a day, all right? Right. And this is something that might, it might have, it might not. I don't know, and I don't know if it's accurate or not. I don't know. It's just what people say. It. Mm -hmm. You know, people say some different stuff when they ain't around y'all. Right. You know, they said something, you know, that Hannah, and Hannah, you know, Hannah was a good girl. Right. Hannah Roden or Hannah Hannah, Gilly? I, I didn't know Hannah Gilly. Okay. I know I know who she was and stuff, but I never talked to her. Mm -hmm. I know she's Frankie's girlfriend or something. But uh, Hannah, my daughter in law, I right. call her my daughter in law. Right. You know, but, uh, somebody said that uh, she was seeing a deputy sheriff up there, up here in Piketon, or Waverly. Mm -hmm. I don't know who he is. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I heard that there was a sheriff sitting at the end of Union Hill all night. So I don't know if that's, mm -hmm. I don't know. But that's just what I heard. Right. Well, I mean, and that's what we want people to tell us what they hear. Yeah. And so that, you know, we, we have some understandings about what we know and based on what people are telling us. But you know, that's one of the things of why we wanted to talk with you is about what you've heard and what you know, but also to clear up some of the, the tips because, like, like I said, 800 tips coming in. we we got to ask you questions because people have mentioned your name because, one, you know, they know that you were good friends with him and we saw that you talked to him a lot. I'll be honest with you. When you you know you said earlier that we were, um, you know, you want to know why it took us so long to come and talk to you, is the phone number that we have for you isn't registered in your name. Yeah, I got a phone, you know, cell phone. Well, yeah, a cell phone, but so it, it's not, you know, we didn't. I did put prepay. Two, I got no credit. Okay. I, I use prepay. Phone. Right, I understand, and so we didn't know. I mean, we'd heard your name, and we well, knew that we'd get, talked to Jake. You get Jake to give you my number. Well, that's when we went back and yeah. listened to his interview. Oh. We found it, we found right. your number, and that's how we found right. you that talking there. So it's taken us a while to get to you, but it's because we just didn't well, have I'll a phone number. But if I know anything concrete, I'd have come and found you. Well, and then you gave us, and so this phone number that you called me from today, that's a new phone? That's, I've had it for about a month. About a month. So you were using the... The, do you still use the no. 937 no. number? No, no. Okay, so you stopped using that about a month ago. Somewhere in that bracket. Okay, and so you picked up. Well, actually, phone. I broke it. You broke it. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so that's a little bit of an explanation on why it, it, it you know, has taken us so long to talk with you. Hey, you wonder why I broke it? Because I kept freaking calling Chris. You kept calling Chris. Mm hmm. And uh, anyway. What else do you want to know? Well, let me ask you this. So we had heard uh, someone had called and said, and that, listen, I'm not trying to... I don't, care what, I don't care what you okay. heard or whatever. You just lay it on me. Okay, uh, is that you and Chris actually got into a fight about a week or two prior to the murders. No. And said that you'd pulled a gun on him. No. Okay. Absolutely not. Didn't happen. Didn't happen. Okay. So... When people tell us that you were out there, okay. How long was it? How, okay. How long ago was this supposed to happen? Well, it had been a couple okay. weeks prior to. A couple weeks. The, well, you can go down there, and there was 500 people see me he's sitting down there eating lunch with him at the lake, the beginning of the week that that should happen. Okay. Okay. Well, no, I'm just saying that you you got into an argument with him, no. and then you sort then you, you pulled a gun on him, no. and you settled the argument. Now, let me tell you something about Chris. No. If you pull a gun on Chris, no. you're gonna have to use it. No. I mean. He, he's a little bitty feller, but he climb up King Kong like a banny rooster. Okay. I mean, right. ain't nobody, you threatening, you better be ready to fight. Now, Chris wasn't an asshole. Right. Okay. Right. He didn't start nothing. He ain't never started a fight in his life. He never, you know, he stayed by himself. But if you jumped, you know, somebody jumped on him, you know, he wasn't going to take it. You know, okay. he was he was straight up. Okay. okay. I mean, he, so when somebody says that, that's a lie. That's a bunch of shit. Okay. Um, and then, uh, 
you know, people were telling us. Something else I know. Okay. Now that I don't know him, I've never spoke a word to him in my life. Okay. I've seen him hanging out. I, I can't say one thing about him because I don't know him. I've never met him. I've never talked to him. I've seen him at Chris's and stuff before wandering around up there. But uh, he, uh, I, I seen him in the, on the newspaper, but he, he, he was shaved. You know, when he ran up at Chris's, he had a great big scraggly ass, nasty ass beard. Mm -hmm. Was that Stone Boy? And some people turned around saying that, you know, he got $8,000 off of Kenneth. And I don't know if, anything about him mm -hmm. but I know as soon as that shit happened and you know he started coming up with some pretty toys okay um and but you don't know him I don't know him I haven't ever spoke a word to him so people other people were telling you that he had you know yeah toys yeah toys like bought that. him a motorcycle and the, you know that's just stuff that I've heard okay just stuff that you've heard but I don't know him but they, you know he said he got a you know he told the one boy you know talking you know to people that he you know took eight thousand dollars off his dead damn cousin okay. you know that right there if he did that you know that's kind of a low life right mother yeah no, no I, yeah i agree um probably did, dead man did you childhood. know did you know kenneth yeah i know kenneth and you know kenneth you know i know kenneth real well mm -hmm. what about gary and gary was top notch okay how long had gary been living there gary lived there off and on most of the time most of the time you know, you know he'd stay there until he'd go on a bender and get you know gary had a problem mm -hmm. and uh, he'd stay there until you know he'd get real strung out bad on something and chris would make him leave for a month or two and then gary when he got straightened up or got broke you know he'd, right. he'd come back what was what was gary's drug of choice do you know um, he <laughs> whatever 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 <laughs> you know whatever he'd get his hands on uh -huh. he was but i got don't take that the wrong way gary was no no gary was all right right I mean, gary you know he'd do any he was it right you now and understand you know like i said we're not trying to talk bad about any of them yeah, you well, know all we're caring yeah. about is solving the murders and yeah so we but you know we we have we talk with a lot of people who tell us just lots of different things and we're yeah. trying to determine you know who's telling us the truth and who's telling us lies you yeah. know and that and that so you know some of the stuff that we hear is you know just like what we said some people tell us well you know that you got in a fight with them no, you know, to figure out no, whether absolutely, that's true absolutely or not. not now uh, other people, chris has never had a cross word now other people have told us that they thought that you and and chris were business partners no okay now if chris you know I don't want to bullshit you, Chris. I don't care what Chris asks me to do. Mm -hmm. You know, if he asks me to do something, I, I'd do it for him because he'd do anything for me. Right. You know, he, you just, you just don't. There's no way you can understand that. All right? No, I understand. You know, Good but he, he, well, me, Chris was, you know, I don't know. If we was, you know, like, like I said, we daylight and dark. All mm -hmm. right, but we, we, you know, pretty much. You know, if he wanted to go do something, we go. If I wanted to go do something, he'd go with me. You know, it didn't matter. So, but, but so you never hauled any weed for no, him? No, no. I hauled a lot of cars for him. I hauled a lot of cars. Mm -hmm. Like, would you haul them around? I go down to Greer, down there to Coe Parts, and get them for him and bring them up. Mm -hmm. And you know, we, you know, go down there and get a hotel and then go fuck around a little bit, go pick the car up and then come home. Mm -hmm. You know. We go all over where's the country. Where's that at? Where's uh, Greer? Greer, where's that at? South Carolina. South Carolina, okay. You know, we go all over the place. I mean, we've been, you know, there ain't no place being in McMahon. Okay. Sorry about that. Someone called me. Did, uh, did you go down to Tennessee and pick up a vehicle? Tennessee? Yeah. No, we went. The last one we got was in Greer. And what, which one Which one was that? Uh, it was a black SUV. That's all I can say. Mazda? I don't know. Did it have a motor? Uh, yeah, it was crunched in the uh, in the front end. Okay. And he had one that was uh, had a bad motor in it, and he just wanted the motor out of that one to fix it. But I think he already sold it. And it was a black SUV. Yeah, I think he already sold it. Old mm -hmm. or new? No, it still has a new car smell. New car smell. Yeah. But you travel all over the country? Yeah, I go with cars. Yeah, I go with him wherever he wants to go because my truck, you know, he didn't have a truck in make it, so we took mine. Okay. Um, you know, that, that that Dodge over there. Yeah. Here's the thing. You know, uh, I think you boys is going in the wrong damn direction. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, from what everybody's saying, unless you're not letting that in, but, you know, it just seems weird to me, you know, that, you know, something, something ain't right there. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, you know, you got people. Now, but like, again, it's something, you know, that, you know, just came up, mm -hmm. okay? But, you know, Chris is, you know, supposed to have, you know, some weed coming in, and uh, he was uh, gunning for people, but he bought off of it, and I don't, I don't know the people. I know where they're at. I know where they're at and everything out there. I know where, you know, where we're from and shit, but I've never talked to them. I've never laid eyes on them. You know, I don't, you know, I never... I didn't talk to anybody, you know, I mean, Chris went around with Chris, you know, he got out done something, I just sat the truck and waited on him. Right. But, uh, you know, he, you know, was uh, supposed to start, uh, he, you know, from what I heard, was going to start selling to the people that he was, you know, the ones that he was buying off of, mm -hmm. you know, because he said he could sell it to them cheaper. Mm -hmm. But that's just what I heard, you know. But you, you don't know who they were. I don't know who they are. I know. But you could take us to them? No. Uh, you know, I know there's uh, a couple of them out in Greenfield, and the rest of them all around Latham. Greenfield, where? Um, Greenfield, out on the other side of Bainbridge, off of, uh, you go out 41. Okay. And when you're at 41 dead ends out there, I forget the name of the highway. Is that going to be in Adams County? No, that'll be up towards Chill Coffee. Okay. Ross County. Ross, 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 Ross County. Okay, County. Yeah, yeah, okay. Headed towards um, Washington Courthouse. Yeah. Okay. So he was dealing with people up there. Yeah, that's where he, he got his, you know, his shit stuff at. So he would go, I mean, look, you know, I don't, and again, I want you to be honest with us. This yeah. is information that we need that, well, that's going to help I'll us. I'll tell you everything I can. Well, and, you know, some of it is, is, you know, we need information that's going to help us solve yeah. these murders. You know, you're, you're his, you know, his friend, like you said, you felt like he was like your only friend. And, and, you know, so we need everything that we can get. I'll, tell you, every, to, I'll tell you everything I can tell you. So you're saying that when he was getting his, his skunk weed or his, his cheap stuff. Yeah, he's getting it out of, up there, but the people in Greenfield all work for everybody out of Latham. Okay. But you don't know who they were. But could you could you point them out to us if someone uh, if you went took a drive took a drive with us one day? Right, uh, or or a way to be able to find them? Okay, I I, I can get you pretty pretty close. All right, uh, I want to write this down. Okay, all right. Uh, you go out to uh, to Latham to the fish hatchery. Okay. When uh, you turn by the fish hatchery and you go up over the hill, like you're going toward the uh, 41, you go up to the top of the hill where the carryout is, and there's a road that breaks back to the right that goes around through there towards the dry bottom. You'll get out there like an old half ass, sometimes it's running, sometimes they sawmill. There's like a little blue gray house. This side of it on the right, it's one of them. Blue gray house on yeah, the right. Yeah, little old guy. And I know the old boy. Is that on Now wait, huh? Is that on dry bone? Yeah, no, I can tell you. By Saul Mill, you said blue gray house. Yeah. Now listen. You ain't gonna tell this shit to nobody in this fucking town, right? No, no. no this is this is us. I mean, you're I'm telling you. No. I, I I mean, and I ain't worried about it, you know, I'm not even telling this shit to anybody like here. No, I know what you're talking about. We, we, we know what you mean. This is this is I got you know, I got my own, you know, I got two grandbabies, two kids, and a wife, and my dad's mom's sick, and I I don't need problems, man. No, no, bastard. Listen, you're I'm telling you, this is this I mean, this is with us. Yeah. Okay, number one, but I probably talk to like the fair uh, you know, I could you know I think that I, they, you know Listen, let me tell you, this is the crookedest fucking county in the state of Ohio, all right? Right. Okay. And I don't want to, you know, I'm not good. You know, everybody out there, I don't worry about. Mm -hmm. These motherfuckers here, Bill, you know. 
Listen, I'm, I'm telling you, you're not the first one that's told us that they don't trust the people here locally and all that you stuff. You know, like I, that. Try, oh, I trust everybody out there in the boonies, mm -hmm. you know, I ain't worried about them. Right. But anybody, you know, I'm just not down with these fuckers up here. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's right. fine. But you're, we're not, we're not uh, going to give them any of that this information. This is between us, and we're not going to go out. And but that's you. okay too, because you guys can lie to me, but I can't no, lie to you. No, no, <laughs> you no, no, no. No, listen to you. I, I, I'll be honest with you. John will tell you the same thing. We are not going to lie to you. Number one. <laughs> And number, no, I'm telling you. All right, I, we'll just go with that, all right? all right? But here's the thing. Now, let's get back to directions. Right. Now, here's what I can tell you about that guy. I don't know his name. Now, listen, there's something else. Okay. The last time I was ever even out in that country was like two years ago. So right. I don't know anything. I don't know if he's even still there. But I do know this. Uh, the two things I can tell you where you know if you figure out if he's still there, the guy mm -hmm. used to work at me two years ago and he killed somebody out there. That's the only thing I know about him. Shot somebody who's breaking in on him. I don't know if he killed him, but I know, you know, Chris talking about him shooting somebody. So that's all I can tell you about him. Cook that fan up and not sure. Yeah, more. it's cooking in here. I've met you before yeah. somewhere. No, I don't think so. You sure you don't work for the sheriff's department? No. Never use my badge. Okay. Uh -huh. Let's see how this so this is so this is one well, you guy. You are more like one what feds then, aren't you? Well, we work for the state. Yeah, yeah we, we work for the same thing, but only state. Yeah, yeah. We, we work okay. for the attorney right. general. We work for the right. attorney general. We're not working. For, right. We don't work for sheriff right. Reader or anybody okay. like that. Okay, that's cool. All right, now let's get back to the rest of them. Okay. All right. He got out forty-one. Okay. Um, when you get out there to. Um, this is still, is this out past this place? Or? No, this is different now. Okay. You go out, bang, you go to Bainbridge, you go out 41 towards Greenfield. Okay. All right. I can remember how to get places. I don't remember names or addresses. Right. I made up with like an ADHA bullshit and, you know, but I can tell you if I give you directions, oh, it'll yeah. take you straight to where you got to go. Okay. Okay. And I don't know, you know, you know, just, Go and knock on a door and see if they do. <laughs> we have ways of finding out. Probably, probably shit themselves. Yeah. But uh, anyway, uh, if you go, um, you go out there, uh, 41, when it dead ends. If you turn to the left, you go towards Greenfield. But you'll turn to the right and go away from Greenfield. That's one something. Have you got a map in here? No. I'm just thinking. I, I, don't, I don't have a map. Uh, anyway. If uh, you turn and go back towards Chillicothe Coffee, or Frankfurt, it'll be back towards Frankfurt. You go down there about four or five miles, it'll be like a little jaggy ass town, okay? Big grain bins and a feed mill and shit. You'll come around a hairpin turn to your, to your right. When you get into town, you'll turn straight back to the left, okay? Then it'll be the uh, second or third place on the left. It's a great big two-story house, but it's like I said, it's two years since I've been out there, okay? But a big two-story house on the left uh, was a bunch of junk sitting around, and there's a big open yard, and uh, about, oh, 100, and 100 yards back this way from the house, sitting in the back corner of the lot, you'll see like a gray semi-trailer that's sitting on the ground. It's like a gray Connex box sitting on the ground. Oh, okay. Okay, but that's how you'll see it. Okay. And, uh, <clears throat> and the only thing I know, the reason I tell you about that box is Chris said they used to have a room in it. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't know, that's like I said, everything I'm telling you is just what I've heard. But these are guys that they he was that's dealing where he, with. That's weed. where he said he got you know you know probably got you know his shit stuff off of. Okay. What what else was he getting in other than weed though? I don't have any idea. Like I said, I don't. I never did bother asking. Did you ever go on trips with him to like Cincinnati or anything like that? Uh, no, I went down to you know I've been with him when he you know went to Cincinnati to over to. Uh, oh shit. Worms Way, it's a store over oh, there. Oh, Worms Way? Yeah. Did, did you ever meet any of his friends there in Cincinnati? No. No. I, I guess I can tell you that one. Uh, Chris, uh, he 
he uh, had, uh, you know, some kind of, well, I guess, it was, you know, dope, I never seen it or anything, but he uh, had it hid out there in a brush pile uh, behind his house, mm -hmm. and I never seen it or anything, he just tells me about it because he, you know, was sitting there, Joe, he said, you think you've had a bad fucking day? I was like, what? He was like, the kids, they always come in there, you know, just nickel and dime to death, you know, $20 gas, this, that, and everything. They come in there and bought gas, but he's like, damn, I can't even get you kids to move a fucking grass. <laughs> so he goes to the money and laughs, but he comes back, but he said, hey, Dad, we cleaned up the yard, Birch Brush Fire. Oh, shit. Oh. I mean, you know, but, I mean, he was sick, so I don't know how much was there, but it, I guess, I guess, I don't know, I don't even know what it was, but I guess it was a lot. But I know, uh, when, when was that? Uh, that was like a month or two before, and I couldn't tell you that, but he, uh, but I do know this, and I don't know the, uh, I don't know his name. I don't know who he is, but I can, you know, you can probably figure this out by his phone calls, probably. Mm -hmm. um, there's a black guy down around Cincinnati, Dayton, somewhere in there, and uh, Chris talked about, but he, you know, I don't know what he bought off of him, but I know he dealt with the guy, and uh, that's who he owed that to, and he owed, you know, he didn't, he owed on that. The really got burned up, but uh, that's how everybody trusted Chris, you know, they'd give him whatever, because mm -hmm. he know, they, you know, he paid, but, um, he, uh, only thing I know about the guy is he's black, and he comes, you know, he's like, well to do, college type thing, and, but he, you know, he don't, you know, he just gangster. Okay, he never said, like, what his name was no, or anything like that? No. So, is that the only black guy that he would deal with, as far as that's you know? That's the only one I know, and that stuff about that shit up there, if them boys been black, that's a bunch of shit. Okay. That black guy from Cincinnati or Dayton, how often did he come out to Union Head? I've never, not, he never did. I never oh, met did. him. I've never seen him, never laid eyes on him. Huh. I know, this the only thing I, now that's the only thing I know about that is what I've heard from Chris. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he had, he had just a black guy that was out there and he was, he would get his stuff from him. Yeah, no, he was But know, he owed that guy. Money. You know, I, I can't, I don't know. Okay. I, I can make up some shit, but I don't know. No, and I don't want you to make up yeah, stuff. You know, I don't know. I just know he, he, he went down there and, you know, got himself off of him and, you know. But when he was sick about this know, stuff. Chris, I told, you know, I told Chris, you know, I told Chris, you know, you know, he had, you know, but Chris, I told him not to, you know, don't fuck around with that kind of shit, you know, because that fucking shit's. You know, that fucking shit's hard. I mean, your yeah. people, you well, know. What do you, what, what do you think he was I ain't saying, about? I ain't saying nothing, I ain't saying nothing bad about it. He done what he done. I, I judge him on what he done for, to me. All no, right? absolutely. We're not, we're but, not, I don't want you to think we're ever passing you know, any judgment on him. Because we don't give a, we, I, you know, I can't express He's fucking enough. dead, all right? I understand. We, we can't express to you enough how we don't care what he was involved in. But all we care about well, here's is the thing, too. Okay, here's murders. something else, too. Mm -hmm. All right? You don't know about Chris. Okay? If Chris would come up out of his grave and tell you who done it, he wouldn't. Mm -hmm. I don't care what you done to him. Mm -hmm. Okay? I don't care what he's looking at. Chris wasn't like that. He wouldn't, you know, he's not, he's not that away. Okay. And I ain't either. But, some, you know, listen, you know, all I we try care, All we care I'm about is the murder. Okay. Yeah, that's, well. That's, who, that's all we care about. The thing is... He, uh, you know, Chris is full around with a little bit of that, you know, I guess. And what, when you say that, I've what are you never talking seen, about? I've never seen it. Okay. What, are you, what are you talking about? You know, that damn... You talking about code? Yeah. You're talking about... Yeah, okay. yeah, that's the only thing I ever know very full with other than the, other than the weed and, okay. the, you know, stuff. But, uh, I don't, you know, like I said, I didn't keep track of that shit. I don't know nothing about it. You know, right. I didn't want... I don't, you know, fucking... So, so uh, here's the thing about it, okay? You know, fucking damn dopers. I mean, Chris wasn't like like him, motherfuckers, okay? Mm -hmm. But they're bottom feeding sons of bitches, right? And, uh, well, yeah, you know they're bottom feeders. Yeah, right. I mean, every, every damn one of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're on that freaking shit, and you know, I mean, they killed her damn grandma for five dollars, right? And you know. I told Chris, you know, not to fuck, you know, shouldn't fuck around with that shit. But, you know, because it, it just, and it, and it ain't so much, you know, 
who cares, you know, what happens if a dumbass is doing it, but, you know, it's a shit that they do. Right. You know, because they're doing it. Right. right. But, uh, you know, I never did, but, I, you know, I don't know how much of that, but what got burned up, but I know he had it. It was a pretty good little bed. So he had, he had a bunch of it there that, that when you he know, got burned up, he was... Oh, he was sick. 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 Okay. I was like, fuck. I was like, you have had a bad day. Uh, but he never told you how much. No, he never told me. I never asked him. Okay. You know, we had a different kind of relation. All right. Well, I didn't give a shit what he did. You know, it wasn't none of my business. Right. You know. So do you know of anybody, like, around here that 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 he would have dealt with other than these people up here? Right. Now, let's we'll see. Got that boy in Cincinnati. I have to, like I said, I don't know who he is, but you know, it probably be, you know, you go by phone, your records, you could probably just sit back out and match it. But I do know this, he was, you know, his, his dad and mom was well off, was gonna send him to school, he got a scholarship to go to college, he wouldn't go because he wanted to go play fucking gangster. Okay. Okay, but anyway, that's all I can tell you about him. Those ones out there, and there's a guy named Fat Boy out on Dry Bone. I don't know who he is, don't know what his real name is, never laid eyes on him. But I know out there on Dry Bone and Life, and they call him Fat Boy. Okay. But other than that, that's the only ones I know. Okay. Talking about these guys out here and, the, you know, kind of the, the bad weed that he had, how much are we talking about? What was the weights that he was dealing with? Hey, Chris did. did he, he, now, where, what I can gather, he had, he, I guess he's gonna have a pretty good bit, you know, was on its, it was on its way, okay, from what I know, yeah. it was on its way here, and it was a pretty good chunk, from mm -hmm. what I could gather. And you ain't gonna put everybody out of business, okay. and, uh, but, uh... How much is a good chunk? Well, I'd say, you know, I don't know, I'd say probably, probably around a ton, you know, a couple thousand pounds, mm -hmm. but he said he's gonna be able to do that, and, uh, you know, pretty much how I was like, out of your fucking mind. Right. But anyway, um, you know, but I know this, the people that, you know, out there, and them's the lowest ones on the pole, mm -hmm. out there, but them motherfuckers, I mean, you have no fucking clue what them motherfuckers do. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, no, no, I don't know nothing about that. I mean, them motherfuckers, they just, all the damn, I mean, all the damn dope in Kentucky, West Virginia, and this part of Ohio comes from those fucking bitches. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, I didn't even how know. How often would you guys go up to these? I, I hadn't been there in two years, Chris. I don't know how often. When I went out there, you know, I guess he went out there once, or, once a week or so. Mm -hmm. You know. When you say he was going to put other people out of business, who, who would that be? Uh, just, you know. Well, if you boys ain't mentally retarded, you know who runs after thinking this fight. I just got to hear from well, you. Yeah, well, you ain't. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, you ain't here and there now. You know exactly. Skip. Okay, like I said, if you ain't mentally, well, you ain't mentally retarded, are you? No. Yeah. Okay. All right. You know, but I ain't. That's all you there. Okay. But, uh, I don't mean. Don't mad with Oh, me. I'm not. But don't, don't think, you know. No, we understand. You boys don't live around here. No, no, you're right, no. Tom. You're right. The other thing is, I'm going to tell you, okay? I hate that son of a bitch, okay? And this goes against my grain, telling you anything. Okay. But I hate that son of a bitch. But, uh, you know... Vance went and done eight, eight years like it wasn't nothing. Mm -hmm. Ever wondered why? Mm -hmm. Okay. But, uh, you know, I'm going to tell you something else. I hate fucking dope heads. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I'm some of the bitches. But, uh, the, uh, his, uh, they bring in, I mean, that one boy, he brings in fuckload for him. Who? I mean, every, he, uh, he's his, uh, he's his cousin, he's, he's a surveyor, and, uh, he ran, that's what it, and, I mean, I was out there one time with, Chris's cousin? No, Latham's cousin. He's, he's a surveyor, or he used to be here in town, 
but he goes out there and he's one that brings it, he, not all of it, but he brings in a lot for him. And, uh, you know, I don't even know if he still lives out there. He lives out off 772, halfway between uh, Chuck Coffee and, uh, and uh, Skid's old store down there. Uh, but uh, he, uh, I think his first name is Russell. But, uh, now listen, I'm going to tell you something. You show any of this shit. I'm not, any of this shit, these motherfuckers down here, it'll be, in, it'll be in Latham before you get to your fucking car. I know. We know that. And if it gets we there, that. if well, it gets there, I know who fucking right. done it. Well, let me ask, let me just say, why do you think we're meeting here and not meeting at the sheriff's office? Okay, well, that's, I wasn't coming down there. <laughs> I understand. I understand. I'm coming down there. Why, but, that, but I'm just telling you, why do you think we're you know, meeting here talking about the car? I'm going you You know, oh, Chris, like I said, he's my best friend. And I always told him, you know, me and him... You know, our plan was going to buy a fucking bar on the beach and just sit there and, you know, get drunk, sit on the beach and, you know, play with the strippers. Right, yeah. <laughs> you know, but, right. uh, but, like but you know, and I kept telling him, I said, man, what the fuck you doing? You know, I kept telling him, what do you fucking keep doing that shit for? I was, he's like, well, yeah, I was like, you don't fucking got to, you know, I don't need no, you know, I'm trust fund, bro. Right. <laughs> you know, I can do what, you know, I was going to buy, but I told him, I said, I'll buy the motherfucker. Let's go. Yeah. You know, so I was like, so you, know, you had money on hand and stuff like that? No, you ever lend him money or no, no, I ain't got money on hand. Just mom, mom and dad got me a big trust fund. You okay. know, I think, you know, I was, I was, I was, I was, so you just don't have to really work. I don't have to do you know, I just take care of my dad. Right. You know, no, that's fine. I take care of my dad. And, you know, he can't walk. You know, I got to get him up and down. And I go get him. If he wants chocolate cake at 4 o'clock in the morning, I go find him a fucking chocolate cake at 4 o'clock right. in the morning. Right. You know? yeah. <laughs> but dad's worked his ass off all his life. You know, he's, you know, he came from nothing. And I mean, he, every bone in his body's been broke. Right. You know, some of them What do you do for a living? He brought uh, horses. Oh, really? I mean, he's, uh, he, he's somebody's. He was just absolutely the world's best. It's like a walking fucking tornado, mm -hmm. you know. I couldn't keep up with him on my best day. Be but, you know, up until he was about 70, he could hang by his damn toes off a rafter and sit there and do his fucking sit-ups, hanging by his fucking toes. Wow. I couldn't me? notice him when he was 70. I'll be you dead. know, but my mom, my mom, the Sunday school teacher, it took him 50 years to get him to quit drinking. As soon as he quit drinking, it's straight off a fucking cliff. <laughs> <laughs> he can't see, he can't hear, can't walk. Uh, His spines fused together for arthritis. And uh, he just, everything's been broke on him. He can't, you know, he just, he just lays in bed. Mm -hmm. uh, he, uh, but dad, you know, made, you know, something, you know, I told Chris, I said, you know, something never happens to mom and dad, man. We, we go do whatever we fucking want, right. you mm -hmm. know. And he's like, you know, no, no. He's like, I gotta get my eyes, like, you know, well, whatever. But, you know, it ain't, but it helped. You know, if I needed something, you know, <laughs> me and Chris kind of broke. One day he'd be broke and I'd have some money, and the next day he'd, I'd be broke and he'd, and we just kind of <laughs> pass back and forth right. between us. Well, that's, that's what know. good friends are for, you know. But, but Chris didn't do nowhere near what people saying, and no bear would be a mountain. Now, he, like I said, he was getting ready to. Right. You know, and I told him, I said, you're out of your fucking mind. Right. I said, have a good luck. Did he say, did he talk about, like, how much money it was going to cost or anything? No, like but he now I know this, you know, whatever, it, it would have been a bunch, but I know it was coming in on, you know, somebody was frightening to him because Chris didn't have the money to pay for that. Uh, you know, he did, they were going to front it to him. They were going to front him. Well, but everybody fronted Chris because they knew he was, you know, yeah. even though, you know, but I'd say it was probably thirty, thirty-five thousand dollars went up in smoke, I'll guarantee you. You know, he didn't, whoever had that didn't have to worry about it because Chris would pay it, you know. Right. When it probably took him a while to get it, but, uh, you know, as soon as, you know, you know, he got some kind of, you know, influx, he debated, it, you know, because that's what he was. Chris wouldn't fuck nobody. Yeah. Well, I guess, you know, one of the things that, you know, that, that puzzles me a little bit about it is, is, you know, what do you think those boys up in, in Latham, you know, for Chris, for, Chris, for Chris and those guys there, but then to get all the way to Kenneth, too? I haven't got a clue. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know. Do you think know. those, you know, was Kenneth, 
a part of all of this with Chris? Jeff and Jeff and Chris and Gary run around a lot together. And like I said, I know Kenneth and Kenneth, you know, Kenneth's a good guy. I mean, he, he real, I always smile laughing, you know, and I don't know, but Kenneth was always, he'd jump on somebody in a minute. I mean, you would look at him sideways, he'd jump on him. Right. But, um, you know, Kenneth and Gary and Chris, you know, they all kind of stuck together and then the rest of the family, you know, they done their thing, Chris and Karen get to do their thing, you know. But, uh, you know, it's like, <clears throat> you know, well, I probably talked to Brady, I've met, and see, that's something else that's real weird. Okay. Okay. Brad Hatfield, you can see Brett's living room window for Kenneth's house. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's just right there. Right. And then Brady, you know, in a mile up the road. Right. But, um, and, but you know, then Brady never, you know, and I know I've never done anything about anything, neither did Tony, but, cause, you know, I've talked to Brady maybe three times, you know, and, I'm, you know, Tony, I probably, you know, I've known Tony, but I've maybe talked to him maybe five or six, eight times at the most. Mm -hmm. I've talked to him more now since this shit than I ever have. Right. But I don't believe they know anything about anything, you know. Right. Um, does Tony work down there at the lake? At the lake, yeah. Okay. But, uh, yeah, he worked down there at the lake with Robin and them. Mm -hmm. And, uh, could, uh, could Robin have been business partners with him? Or no, no, absolutely not. Okay. Let me tell you something. Robin's a, a genius. I mean, he is. He's a. I don't know him, but I mean, that boy came from nothing. And, I mean, he, he just he he's smart. He he don't have to do nothing like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, so he just kept Chris around to just. They work, work for him. Up. Yeah, they work for him. Mm -hmm. You know, and they they I, they've known each other all their lives. They grew up together. I guess. Okay. Um, well, is there any, anything else that you can think of? Look, I promise you that none of this stuff is going to I'm going to tell you something. The only thing I can tell you is from what I heard, all this shit y'all going to you know, and that fuckhead down there talking family, that's bullshit. Mm -hmm. but I'm going to tell you something else. Something like that fucking shit to get that. I mean, there ain't a bunch of fucking hillbillies do something like that. And when well, you know, sorry, right. it never convinced me. Right. You know, that's like some SEAL Team Six bullshit. Mm -hmm. Well, but the thing is, you know, with uh, that right there. Is. Well, I mean, it's like I said, what I've heard, I don't know for sure, but just what I've heard mm -hmm. is those motherfuckers would sell for like 1150 1200 And, you know, from what I've heard, you know, Chris is going to be able to tell you, you know, two, three hundred dollars a thing. So who do you think it was going to go to? You know, so that's a big hit in the financial fucking pocket for You're somebody. You're talking pound. Yeah, pound, yeah, and, you know, that's a big damn hit. Right. For mm -hmm. somebody, you know, but... Especially uh, when you're dealing with, you, you think, an actual time. Yeah, well, that's a lot of fucking money. That's you know? But, you know, it, uh, like I said, and from what, where I, you know, I'm pretty sure that whoever... You know, he was a, and I don't know this, no shit, okay? That Rass did not care to, you know, but I'd say that it was some, you know, some of the same ones that, you know, Vance used to run with is what I'm, I'm pretty sure of. Mm -hmm. But is where it was coming from, but, and, uh, but other than that, like I said, mo everything I know is just shit that I've heard, some of it I've heard from Chris, some of it I've heard from other people, you know? But the thing about all these people out here talking, they can't tell you shit. And I'm going to tell you why, because Chris didn't talk to none of them motherfuckers. Okay. You know, he didn't talk to nobody. Mm -hmm. And, 
But, uh, you know, I don't know about that Carver boy. I've known, you know, I've known him and his fa family for, you know, since they were, you know, since we were kids. Mm -hmm. But I never did, you know, talk to them much or anything. I bought a dirt bike off of them one time when I was 16. But other than that, but I know them boys, they fuck around a lot. The Carvers? Yeah, I mean, they, well, they've been in and out of prison for that shit all the time. Mm -hmm. But I don't know anything, you know. I know he was, you know, that, that uh, Gilly girl, Hannah. Right. That uh, Frankie's right. girlfriend. Frankie's girlfriend. Yeah, but uh, I guess that's his stepdaughter. And they were, he was out there a lot. Okay. Andrea Carver. I don't that, know. that would be, I think, the... Ains, I think, his name. Andrew Carver would be the uh, one of the only ones I know is Stoney and Harry. Yeah, I know and Stoney, I know Harry. That's the only ones I and Jerry. Harry, Harry, Jerry's Harry. dead. Okay. Harry, That's the only ones I know. Harry Carver. Harry. Huh? Harry Carver. Yeah, Harry. Okay. And where do they are they part of that Latham group? That I I don't know. I just know I know I know that they but them boys was always into like have bad, you know, hard shit, you know. Like users. Yeah, well, they were users and they sold lots mm -hmm. of it, but they got busted and they went to the pen for it. Okay. So I don't know what they're doing now, you know. Okay. Anything like that, I can, you know, I, I don't know what else to tell you. So you're saying all that you know about really is the, the, the Latham boy, the, the boy. That's what the only thing I know is that's where he got his commercial at. And I know, you know, from what I heard, he was going to start selling it to him instead of buying it off of him. And those boys. They, they work for Latham. Uh, they work for Latham. Okay. Gotcha. But, uh, okay. but, uh, and like I said, on Latham, I know, now this is, this ain't like Greece and shit. This is like back before, you know, Vance got sent off, you know. Mm -hmm. Vance, well, when he was getting ready to go, you know, Vance, he was real, real bad strung out on fucking that. I mean, mm -hmm. I guess he just, but, you know, but he talk a, talk a lot, and he, you know, he just, he, uh, he said that uh, Russell, I and mean, I couldn't believe that, because Russell's a surveyor up here. But he said, no, Russell's the one that was uh, bringing it in for him. Yeah. And uh, he then, he had, uh, you know, a few other boys in Hall for him. But, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, Russell kind of made sense after thought about it. And Russell's always got tons of cash. Uh, so you were friends with Vance, too? I know Vance. You, you know. So you, Vance, and, and Chris Vance, could, could yeah. all hang out? Well, yeah, no, me and... Vance and Chris didn't hang out. Me and Vance talked to you, see each other sometimes, and you know, after me and Chris, you know, we hung out a lot. Okay. You know. well, I'm just trying to understand, you know, what the dynamic yeah. was there and, and how how that all goes. I mean, because yeah, because look, look, like like you said, I mean, you know, we want to we want to understand how this all works, yeah. and we want to listen. You, you're, you're telling us that there are people are telling us that you know stuff, then those people are full of shit. shit. So we want to get an understanding yeah. out of you. As well, the only thing, you know, I can tell you this, okay? Chris, he didn't talk to nobody. Mm -hmm. Every time you, but, you know, they doing something with, you know, Chris, I ain't saying Chris wasn't doing it, but I guarantee you they weren't doing it with him. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you know, and that's just a flat fact. Mm -hmm. You think that Shannon would know anything since he was hanging out with Gary and them? Uh, Shannon, I, I've never talked to that motherfucker. Okay, I, I, I might, at, at most, I've, you know, glanced at the alley or something, you know, yeah, but uh, I know he, he worked, uh, Chris kind of took care of him from, you know, I suppose Chris and his friends since they was a little kid kind of took care of him, but, you know, from what Chris said, he's a bad damn needle freak, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, well, I guess you know, I just, you know, if you knew, you knew Chris best, we just, you know, we hear people will tell us that Shannon was right there in the thick of it with him, would help bring people yeah. in to Chris and, no, and stuff no, like that. Well, he, 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 I guess, you know, he, Chris always, you know, 
meet him down there at his mom's house on Camp Creek and sell him, you know, weed and shit. But other than that, I don't know him. I don't know the deal of it, but I know he's, you know, I, you know very, I might have seen him out of Chris's house one or two times, but I know he, Chris kind of took care of him. Mm -hmm. okay. You know, but I do, yeah, Chris said, but he moved, you know, moved a lot of weed for him. Okay. All right. Everybody says he's not even around here anymore. Um, he's around, but I think he, he tries to stay below the radar with everybody now, I think. Yeah, but, um, he, uh, he's bad, you know, well, I know, you know, he, everybody, even Tony Tag, he's a you know, needle freak. Mm -hmm. But he, you know, he just worked, you know, down at the lake with him and stuff, Chris took care of him. And, uh, like I said, he, you know, he bought sold weed off of him. And I think Shannon... I think, uh, I think he was, uh, but, uh, shit. He took, uh, what's that boy's name? Leg. And Leg Boy. And, uh, and I don't want to, you know, excuse my language, you know, but they call him Nigger Craig. That's it. He, that's not, he, yeah. If you ask him his name, he'd take a digger crack. Oh, that's really? Okay. Exactly. <laughs> but, uh, at, uh, I mean, but uh, they run back and forth. And Shannon's run back and forth over there. You know, Chris had told, told me that. So I don't know anything more about that. But that's the only ones between them and the ones out there. But I know who Chris fooled with. But I know there's probably, you know, more. But right. I, just, I don't. Yeah. Okay. I didn't go around. I had no desire to go around was uh we saw all those chickens out there was he involved in chicken fighting or was uh, that all those chickens that were out there yeah was he involved in chicken fighting or did he talk about that or yeah but well, well, uh, everybody around here fights chickens man right. Right. i understand and you know uh everybody makes a big damn thing about that if you turn to them some bitches at least on each side of the parking lot within five minutes will be in their fight right i mean but you know i'm not down for chicken fighting or anything i just don't see <laughs> what they're all to get worked up about. Right. But everybody fights them over. You know, everybody yeah. fights. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I can't see the, you know, I ain't gonna say anything wrong with anybody does it, but I can't see the big deal. Okay. No, so, I, I'm just, you know, trying to think. I know they go down there to uh, Paintsville and they go up to Athens. There's a barn up there somewhere. And uh, they go up there in uh, Meigs County someplace. And uh, when they go down to uh, Paintsville sometimes. Paintsville? Where's that, that in Kentucky? Kentucky. Um, so if I got it straight, so you're saying like, you know, the, the weed that Chris was growing, that was you think that was the stuff that he was going to start selling to the people in Lincoln? No, no. Okay. So this stuff that he was growing, though, was pretty good stuff, right? Uh, as far as what I can tell, probably Chris didn't do anything half-assed. Right. But I didn't know, like I said, I don't know nothing about it. You know, I never asked him, didn't care. Okay. The only thing you knew about was the you know, commercial stuff. And the only reason I know about that is, that, you know, I've seen, you know, you know, Chris talked to me about it sometimes. We just, uh, yeah, we bullshit about it. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, that's a good question. That makes me think. That 2,000 pounds. I don't know it was that much. Right. But I thought it was probably around that. I don't it, you know. It, you don't congest it. Maybe it was a thousand. It might have been a five. It might have been five. Hours, but the way Chris talked, it was a, a big where, damn chunk. Where was and it? And when I figured a big damn chunk, I figured, you know, it's yeah. going right. to be a bunch. Right. Where was it coming from? Uh, it was coming out of out west somewhere. I don't know. Who his hookup would have been. I don't know. As far as I know, is what I told you. I think it's one of them boys' bands used to run with. But I haven't got a clue. Oh, one of Vance's old. Yeah, one of his. But, uh, but see, when that ship, everybody, when that ship was Vance, I mean, them motherfuckers out there in life, and they, and they, Vance said they all in a big, and everybody, you know, quick with this one. And now, you know how uh, fucking dopers do? Something goes, I mean, everybody's a fucking suspect. Right. I mean, you know, and they just scattered, and uh, you know, when they get you know different ones here and there, and you know, I figured just one of it used to, you know, take care of Latham, and then just you know, Chris got a hold of it Chris somehow. Got hold of it somehow. Mm -hmm. I know, you know, Chris has been you know wanting wanting somebody for 
fuck, as long as I've known him. Really? You know, trying to get somebody to, you know, bring in for, for him. You know, for, you know, commercial type of weed. Mm -hmm. But as long as I've known him, you know, that's, it, so, you know, and he finally, finally gets it done. <laughs> so I got a, I got a kind of a tough question. I, Lay it on me. Don't worry about it. All right. How often did Chris talk to Latham? I can't tell you that. He, he never, never talked to Latham. Ever. He never talked to Skid? No, ever. Okay. I mean, that motherfucker don't talk to nobody. Did you ever talk to... Fuck no. no. I hate that motherfucker. I ain't going nowhere near that bastard. And that brings me to my next question. I remember earlier he said you hated him. What, what, what brought that hate on him? I mean, well, he's an asshole. Oh, okay. I mean, he's just a flat asshole. You know, and... How does he get so many people working for him? He's a gazillionaire. Is it pays him money? <laughs> I reckon that's how it works. Okay. You know, and I don't even know why a stupid motherfucker does that shit for you. Hell, he had that damn coal mine down in Kentucky, made him $100,000 a day. Jesus. I'm going to tell you something else about the bastard advance. Vance told me this. He owns a bank down there next to that fucking coal mine where he keeps all of his money at. Oh, Merry yeah. Christmas. Mm. You know, wow. I'd laugh my ass off on that one. But, uh, you know, Vance said he bought a bank down there in that town where his coal mine is, or had, see, the motherfucker went down there and, uh, now this is what Vance told me, went down there and bought a farm down there for like seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000. He's putting in a damn septic tank and hit a vein of coal. He took it out of this state and it was the purest vein of coal in the state of fucking Kentucky. And he started mining that shit, and I guess one time, I mean, he was making, you know, Millions a yeah. month, every month. Yeah. And then the greedy bastards still fucking around for that fucking stupid shit. I mean, what the fuck would somebody do that for? Yeah. You know, if I made one month's worth of over fucking mine, I'd be sitting on a fucking beach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, the rest of my damn life, but, you. you know, over that, but, um, you so know, Chris, that motherfucker, he never, Vance done all his running, okay? okay. Vance was the, the only one that ever was around that bastard. So Vance was the only one that yeah. he had trusted and right. to do a lot. Right, And, you know, Vance, when, you know, you know, Vance was sitting there, you know, I remember his old lady begging him, bawling. She's bawling, you know, for him to do something not to go to fucking prison. Mm -hmm. And Vance was like, you know, he's like, hey, you're fucking mine. Right. You know, right. he's like, he said, I'm just gonna go and get it over with, you know. Right. And I'm gonna tell you something, Vance, you know, Vance is a good fella, you know, he, he, he got his problems, but right. you know, he's a hell of a good boy, boy and you know, he's always, you know, I've known Vance since I was a little kid, man, you know, but uh, mm. Vance always, you know, he just <laughs> keeps his ass out of trouble. Right. You know. So has Latham got pissed off at people who had his I, I have no clue, man. I don't know. You hear about shit every day. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you, you know, hear about the You hear shit. about the fucking shit, and I know there's been... You know, a lot of motherfuckers ain't around anymore. Nobody's right. seen them. Right. <laughs> I guess they're on vacation. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you can just go back through the fucking records and look at that shit. Right. You know, I didn't hear saying congestion. <laughs> Although they didn't say fuck it and move to Aruba. But right. <laughs> they damn sure ain't around here anymore. <laughs> and like I said, you know, I, I hate that fucking shit. Right. You know. Well, we do too. You know, well, I'm going to tell you something. You know. The fucking, the dope, I mean, it is absolutely just fucking destroyed. I remember, you know, this, this part of the world. I mean, it's, it's, it's dead. It's destroyed it. And, you know, it just seems like every time, you know, back in the 70s, everybody smoked weed, okay? Now, you know, 70s, 80s, you had your potheads, you know. They come out, you know, you, you know, they go out and get a little bit of money, go get us some weed, go home, watch TV and eat Cheetos. Right. Okay. Well, they went on a big damn crusade around here, and what that was back in the 80s and 90s was getting rid of all the damn competition. Mm -hmm. Okay. But anyway, you know, they got rid of that, and then everybody went to fucking pills. Right. You know, and them some bitches, and then they went on the big crusade and got rid of all the damn pills. Mm -hmm. Now everybody's on the fucking coke, the crack, and heroin, and the fucking shit they're making in their damn kitchen. Right. I mean, it just keeps, you know, it seems like the more of us are the worse it gets. Right. 
Yeah. I mean, if I was in, I'd put the shit in lemonade stands on the fucking street corners. And everybody right. gives it, be dead six months, we wouldn't have to fuck with them anymore. Right. You know, they're freaking, it's horrible. Right. No, I, I agree. I mean, you know how many fucking people have died down here from that shit in the last six months? Oh, well, I mean, look what's going on in Cincinnati. Right, yeah. And I'm going to tell you something. Well, in Huntington and you I'm know. Gonna tell you, and like I said this a little bit ago, everything around these fucking states, West Virginia, Kentucky, and this great big circle, mm -hmm. it all comes from the same fucking place. Mm -hmm. I mean, if one way or another, motherfucker got his fucking fingers in it. Mm -hmm. You know? Okay. But, you know, I don't know what else to tell you there. I just wish we knew more about the association with Latham and the sheriff's office and exactly what it is. If it's, I mean, if it's stuff you, you've seen with your I want to tell you something. I just wish we knew. Well, all right. If there ain't shit in my blood, you know, what the fuck? Uh, top dog down there, him and his brother, he's work. I mean, with kids. For, like, they did. I don't really enjoy the fucking ones came up here. It was good that. Uh, him and his brother. Now, you know, you got unlimited resources. You got to do is a little bit of, uh, you know, looking, mm -hmm. and you can tie all that shit together. Right. You know, how come you think, you know, what do you think, you know, motherfucker, that one motherfucker, you know, just absolutely murdered that boy up there on grassy. I mean, who the fuck? Now, I, I'm going to tell you something straight up. Now, I've got nothing but respect for you boys, okay? But there's some of you fellas out there, and, you know, like I said, I'll tell you straight what I'm thinking. Ain't worth a fuck. Oh. We uh, we and I'm going to tell you something. I can see you want to go home at night, too, mm -hmm. okay? And that's what they always say. But like that boy here a while back on the freaking news, that little black girl's running across that yard chasing that other boy with a butcher knife. That cop said stop. She didn't stop. And I'm going to tell you something. Why on earth couldn't have done that shit any better? He drove down and legged down a little bit. I mean, rolled her. Right. Took her to the hospital, patched her up. There is no reason for anybody to shoot somebody but it's unarmed mm -hmm. and kill them. Mm -hmm. I mean, shoot the motherfuckers in the lane, you know. Yeah. But, you know what I'm saying? Right. You know, and, you know, that shit. But these motherfuckers around here, like I said, they murdered that boy up our grass. Like I said, if he went unarmed, he's crawling up out of a damn ditch. His car was stuck. How the fuck could that scare you? I mean, if you're that damn scared, stay home under your damn bed and order Chinese. Mm -hmm. I mean, I but I know you guys got a shit damn job, but if you ain't careful, you can get killed real damn oh, easy. Yeah. Right. No. I mean, but my God, you got to have a little common sense. Right. You know, yeah. don't be just fucking, you know. But uh, when that shit happened, then the cocksucker turned around and shot his damn neighbor and killed him. Right. And I got $50 to a dollar, says that motherfucker don't do a day in jail. We are putting on a big show or something, but he, you know, he'll, if he does, it's not going to be very damn long. Mm -hmm. But that's the way they all do that here. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's, it's like a fucking sewer. Mm -hmm. But, uh, see, when that guy happened and then the other Henderson retired, then they slipped the other one in there. And I'm going to tell you something, he ain't going nowhere. How much you want to put on it? No. I guarantee you he's going to win the election in a landslide. Mm -hmm. Guarantee it. Right. So, but, but you're saying that they they both worked for Latham then? Well, I ain't saying shit. You know, like I said, if you ain't mentally retarded, you just got to take a look. You can figure this shit out. Right. <laughs> I mean, my God, I got a sixth grade education, and I can see what's going on. Uh, well, it's, it's easy <laughs> and, to cover a lot of shit. Well, it's, it's, easy, it's, it's, well, it's, easy, it's easy to know what's going on, but locking yeah. it down is a little yeah. bit harder. Right. You know, right. I understand where you're at. Right. But, uh, so I guess when we, you said... But I'm going to tell you something. I wouldn't be telling you shit. But, you know, them motherfuckers, you know, Chris was, you know, like I said, he didn't know him. 
And Hannah, Hannah was, you know, she's a brat. <laughs> she's a pure brat. Yeah. I know I called her. I was like, she was my brat. Right. You know, and we go somewhere and she'd call Chris up and she'd be like, you know, you bring me something back, Chris, like that. She's like, oh, let me talk to Billy. Right. And then she, I know, she, Chris said, you sound like I spoil her. Right. I was like, but man, she, you know, and, you know, Jake, he's running around like a fucking, you know, he acts like she's still coming home, you know. Uh -huh. I mean, he's like burnt yeah. and, you know, don't know what to do. And then Sophie, you know, the only, only reason I'm saying shit to you boys, I don't give a fuck. No, I don't do that, you know. Chris would be ashamed of me. Right. <laughs> you know, well, but, you, you want, know. We just want you to understand. You we don't want to catch these people. Yeah, well, I'm going to tell you something. You're looking in the wrong damn direction. Mm -hmm. You need to be going the other way. Okay. You know, that's nothing. That's just, you know, like I said, you know, they, uh, I don't know what else to tell you, but yeah. I'm going to tell you something else, man. Okay. You boys were were you around here on the first day when that first happened? Mm -hmm. You was here? Yeah. The first day? Right. What time did you get here? I think we both rolled in around 9 a.m. 9 a.m.? Mm -hmm. okay. No, probably about 10, 10, 30. We got the call. Yeah, we okay. got the call at 9 a.m. Well, you know, okay, well, that's, that, that's better. Mm -hmm. been, everybody, we, everybody that I talked to said fucking motherfucker didn't call nobody in until noon. John and I have been here every day since yeah, but that's, that's what they said. They said they didn't call anybody in. No. And they also, you know, two or three people said, you know, because there was sheriff's deputy sitting out there at Union Hill all night. Mm -hmm. That's just bullshit rumors. Right. And then the other rumors said that Hannah was dating, you know, one of them. But, you know, I was, Hannah, you know, her and Jake been going since she's like 13. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she... I figured she, you know, she'd, she'd been, she'd go, she'd come back, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She was, you know, but Jake, he just, you know, he don't, you know, he, he just walked around the fucking days. Mm -hmm. But, you know, and then, you know, you put this shit, you know, all this bullshit. What kind of bullshit motherfucker, you know, puts that kind of shit in the newspapers? I mean, mm -hmm. now, bear in mind, you know. <laughs> Frank and Christopher would have owned that shit. <laughs> yeah. But them boys wasn't nothing, nothing like people say about it. You know, you, the way people talk about them ain't just like, you know, just absolute freaking savage. They ain't. You know, they was a little brownie and stuff, but no, they right. wasn't, they just normal teenagers. That's, that's right. the way you it know, when you live in the country. And well, and then the some bitches, you know, talking that shit about them, yeah. you know. They were good boys. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, they never caused no problem, really. I guess when right. once in a while. <laughs> Every good. once in a while, you gotta, you gotta get to piss and vinegar. Yeah, you know, but they, uh, but, you know. Hey, Billy, about six, eight years ago, what did you know about the pill mills that Chris was involved in? The pill mills? Yeah. I know, he lost money. Yeah, he, <laughs> yeah, he, got, he, he had, you know, he had one. He had one down there in uh, Peebles, and he had another one down there on the Bluegrass Parkway. And the one in the Parkway is only open for like a week or two, and the one up here is only open for like a week or two. Okay. And then he was in on one with, uh, oh shit, I can't think of his fucking name, but they finally, he's in the fucking pen for ever now. Uh, he had one up there, he was like a half partner uh, on one in Columbus. But um, I can't think of that fucker's name. Um, he's in on the guy that was in with journeys and shit. You know, all the fucking journeys down there. Mm -hmm. uh, he was partners with them and. Uh, Bart. Huh? Bart. Uh uh. No. Uh, he got like 12 years, 12, 13 years. Uh, he had to, he was gonna open that, him and his lawyer was gonna open that pharmacy down there in Piketon. Okay, would you recognize his name? Yeah, if you say, uh, uh, give me a second here. Um, Tracy, Tracy something or other. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Bias. I, I don't know his last name. But he, his guy, him and his lawyer was opening the pharmacy down here, right there on the corner in Piketon. Uh -huh. And uh, Chris was in on, 
the one up there in Columbus with him as a partner, but, you know, but he wasn't on the paperwork. And uh, the, uh, but the ones in uh, Peebles and uh, down there in, uh, on the bluegrass there, about halfway across the bluegrass parkway, mm -hmm. um, the little town down there, shit, I can't think of the name of it. Um, Oh, it's where that one guy, uh, that one guy the FBI is looking for, you know, down, you know, that cornbread mafia fucker, you know, everybody's always, you know, he's like a damn hero down there or something, boom, or whatever it comes from, that town he came from, hmm. you know, I mean, yeah. He's like a big weed guy down there. Okay. But uh, that town he came from is where I, it was where I... And it's on the bluegrass park. Yeah, well, it's off the of bluegrass down there, about halfway across it. But that's where it was. They get a big damn write up about it, and, you know, with papers and shit. Okay. 9 Hello? Yeah. Tell them, Margaret. So those journeys, are they badass people or what? Uh, the journeys? They're fucking scum. Scum? Yeah. I mean, them some bitches are scum. I mean, them and, you know, that boy down there runs that damn tire shop down there. They're all in on the same shit together. I mean, and... What tire shop is that? I'm down there on 104 uh, on the west side. You know, uh -huh. But, you know, he's supposed to got sent off on it. But, you know, they just... They just do whatever the hell they want, and then whoever's dumb enough to do anything, well, they send them to the freaking pen, and then they let them off, and they go right back to business. Okay. You know? And they just, you know, they're scum. Right. And he got on the tire shop. He had a couple of them pill mills, too. He had one down on 104 and shit. And, uh, but, uh, But you're saying Chris lost a lot of money in them. Oh, yeah, he lost money. But he got in, you know, I guess, you know, he said he just got there too late. And, yeah. you know, I told him, you know, that shit ain't no, you know, I never did, you know, I didn't tell, you know, saying whatever he done, what he done, but I don't, I don't like that shit. Right. So it was basically tra Tracy that he was in business with? Yeah. I mean, the guy was under one in Columbus. Yeah. yeah. But uh, then, uh, well, Tracy's the one, uh, the one that got him, you know, doing, you know, the, the doctor shit. Okay. You know, he's the one who told him how to do it. Yeah, I guess him and Chris have been friends for a long, long time. Oh, okay. But I don't know anything else about that. I never talked to Tracy all that much. But, you know, hmm. but like, you know, it's uh, everything around here, man, you know, you'll go a thousand different things because everybody around here knows everybody around here. Right. You know, and, you know, everybody, you know, you. It's everybody, you know, one way or another, somebody knows, you know, somebody was doing, you know, just, just the way it is. Everybody right. knows everybody. Yeah. Right. But, you know, that's all I can tell you that'll help you. Well, no, I... You know, if it you, helps you, I don't know. But. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this. I mean, you know, well, look, here's a promise that I'm going to make to you. And I think John would say the same thing. We're not going to go out and tell anybody what you said. You know, and you're, you're never going to hear... It, you know, yeah, I'm going to tell you something. I, you know... <laughs> that was in the sheriff's department. You can tell anybody else in the county, they wouldn't believe you anyway. Right. <laughs> but, you know, but the thing is, the fucking, you know, if you all don't do something, ain't nothing going to get done. Okay? Well, um, we're, just our guarantee to you is we want to catch the killers. And and well, I'm going to tell you, today. I'm going to tell you something. If you boys don't do it, if you don't get, like, you know, get the feds or whoever in here, you know, if y'all don't do it, it ain't gonna get done. Yeah. Well, we're, we are, you know, like I said er, when we started, you know, yeah. FBI, the DA is working with us. We've got lots of resources that we're going out and, and we're trying to investigate this case. And you know what? We're gonna solve it, okay? And that's, you know, but we need people like you that are gonna help us out. I, and, I'll tell you, like I said, I'll tell you anything I can tell you to help you, right. you know, on this shit. So would there be anybody else that we could talk to that, you know, would be friends with Chris that would know his business that, that we could trust is going to give us the information that we need? See, that's the thing. Mm -hmm. You know, the ones that I know Chris fool with, 
and I don't, like I said, most of them don't even know their name. I just know where we live because I was in the car, you know, with Chris and we went. Well, okay. what, what if we did this? You know, you got your groceries and stuff in there, and I don't want. I got an air conditioner. Yeah, no, I don't. Sorry. I don't want your, you know, your food to go bad or anything yeah. like that. Can we meet up again and talk some more about it? Give you some time to think about, you know, some of this. Well, stuff? if I think of anything else, yeah, I'll call you or something. But yeah, I don't care about that. And if if I come up with something, you know, some other questions that we would call you with, okay. and, and we can meet someplace. Okay. We won't meet at the sheriff's office. Uh, all right. You know, we can meet anywhere. As long you know. as there ain't you know nowhere around, you know, sure, you know, that shit. Mm -hmm. But uh, but you know that's you I'm know. I'm trying, you know. But give me a second to think. Like I said, my sugar's up high today. You know, I'm trying to think of anybody else. You, know. you ever know a guy named Red? Red, yeah, yeah, that motherfucker. Okay. Yeah, I know that motherfucker. Yeah, a little. He used to work. Uh, he worked a lot for out there, and now it's the same one I'm talking about, thinking about. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I can't think of his fucking name, but he used to work for Vance and Latham. I mean, he. I mean, he. And he's a wormy little bastard. Okay. But uh, he. Uh, he, 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 he was, you know, that motherfucker, he moved a lot. I mean, that, he was right in the middle of that shit out there. Okay. And I mean, lots of it. How tight was he with Chris? Not very. Not very. Not very. But, uh, you know, Chris didn't have too much to do with him because he was a wormy little bastard. But him and Vance was like thick as thieves. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, but uh, he, uh, he, uh, that, yeah, he, he was right in the middle of all that shit. I can, I can vouch for that. You don't remember his name? I, I don't remember his name, but he's a little, you know, uh, damn. It was the same one I'm thinking of. He, uh, right before uh, France got sent off, he told me he ain't got the big damn fight spot of the mastic on him. And he went up there and had pants fight a fucking elk out of his shoulder. He <laughs> said he doesn't like his shoulder because she bit him. Fucking bats bit a hook out of his shoulder. Oh, yeah. Fucking oh, stupid dude. motherfuckers. Huh. But, uh, but if it's the same one, uh, same one of that, that's, you know, okay. that way you know if it was it. You look, see if around the time Vance got sent off, if it's the one you're talking about, it's got a domestic on him, look at the thing. I Is see, that around Peebles? Huh? No, he used to live out around Latham. Latham. Right up there, uh, uh, right past Long's Retreat on the, his mom okay. or dad, I think, lives right past Long's Retreat on the uh, right. Okay. But Last name Hall? I don't know his last name. Okay. But uh, other than that, but like I said, everybody, you know, if you mention somebody around, they're all. Okay. They're all in on it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the whole damn county. Well, one thing I'd like to to leave you with is, I just ask that you don't. Talk I to don't anybody talk to nobody. Yeah. yeah, like I said, you, or, you know, yeah. if I knowed anything, I thought could have been a real help. I, I'd have, okay. you know, I was, you know, I'd have went and found. So I wouldn't have went to that on air, but I'd have found somebody. But uh, I don't talk to nobody. That's okay. why me and Chris get along so well. Sure. You know, we didn't, you know. Didn't talk to well, you've got you've got my business card. No, I don't. What I mean, you've got my phone. I got your phone number. My phone. I'm gonna give you a business card. If I can think of anything, you know, I don't care to tell you, but uh, like I said, you know, you want to uh, don't think my number on yeah, that in case you can't get a hold of go ahead. I'm going to tell you something. You know, y'all seem like you're pretty straight up and everything for what you are, but, you know, don't cause me no damn trouble down No, 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 no. We're not going okay. to say anything. I got to, you know, I, 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 you know, I, I these, mother, told you. these motherfuckers down, I mean, you know, I ain't scared of the motherfuckers, but I just don't need the aggravation. Right, no, I'm, I know, we I told got, you. You know, I got my dad sick, my mom, and, you know, my sister and shit, and then I got, you know, my wife and two grandbabies in the house, and my boys and stuff. Mm -hmm. Don't cause me no trouble. We're not going to cause you any trouble. I'll help you any way I can. Mm -hmm. But first, you know, Billy, that's, that's I'm going to tell you something. Your last word. You, uh, yeah. and the only reason I'm helping you is because motherfuckers, you know, you know, they, 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 somebody has robbed, you know, a lot of people down here, mm -hmm. flat ass robbed them. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, you know, but if, if them some bitches up there, you know, 
you know, if they start getting wet, you know, I'm going to know you boys said something to them. Now, well, listen, you know, it's our promise to you. I'll help, you, gonna... any, I'll help you anywhere I can. I don't, you know. Well, I appreciate I'll that. I'll tell you something. I ain't no fucking snitch. No. I'm... But Chris is gone, so right. it don't really matter. Well, we, you know, it don't matter just... now. And, and somebody, you know, that shit, that was bullshit. You just need to understand that all we're trying to do is solve who killed Chris and his family, and that's that's all we're concerned about. And, and, uh, it, and with, that the information boy, you've given us. And see, they're, they're doing some. I mean, they're doing some stupid shit. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't know how much that car boy knows because he's a fucking dopehead, you know. But he hell, he said they shot his kids. Most, what the fuck did they shoot his kid the most for? Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, what the fuck is that? I mean, nothing makes sense, you know. Right. But, and I'm going to tell you something, you know, I know it wasn't a family, I, I know it wasn't a family member, because Ben Buckers, you know, they were, and I don't know how we, if we fucking could have got a, pulled that shit off anyway, because if one, one phone call would have been my one, I mean, them motherfuckers would have been coming out of the uh, you don't understand it, I mean, they, they was, you know, they were there. For right. one if you fought one of them, you go fight them all. Right. No, you no, know. Right. And they didn't give it. And they was a close, tight family. Mm -hmm. You know. No, well, no, no. It wasn't one of your family members. Okay. And that's what the fuck asshole up there keeps trying to lay it off of. And that's bullshit. Mm -hmm. You got them two kids down there in the fucking foster care. Mm -hmm. I mean, what's up with that shit? Mm -hmm. That's bullshit. Them babies are down. There. I mean, Chris's mom and his brother. Yeah, you know. The one little girl, Jake, thought was his, but, you know, he did a DA and wasn't his, but, you know, but still, she's Sophie's sister, yeah. and they're down there, and they, I mean, what's up with that shit? Really? Yeah. I mean, why don't they like that, you know? Uh -huh. Well, that's, unfortunately, that's one of those things that we're not involved in. They don't let us get involved in that kind of stuff, and so we're, we're they keep us at arm's length away from all of that. Uh -huh. You guys work for Journey General. Right. I mean, well, even but, to me like you're the fucking boss. Right. <laughs> right. Well, but we don't have much say in, in where they put those kids or anything like that. Well, you ought to try to get, you know, get him to do well, something about it. Well, we've got Take our attorneys. down there in that damn dungeon. We've got our attorneys that are working with the family trying to, to, to get, you know, them yeah. some visitation and trying to work things out with you them. You know, so. Chris, Chris's mom, she's, you know, I've never met her, but, you know, Chris... Chris, is, you know, said she was, you know, she special, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, Tony says she's a wreck mm -hmm. and stuff, but, you know, what's it what would have at least seeing babies. Right. And I'm going to tell you something. They don't need to go to the Carters. Mm -hmm. They don't. All right. But, you know, I don't know. If, uh, give me a second to think here, man. Like I said, my sugar's up today, and I ain't no, I'm just thinking. I'm trying to think of anything else. Let me see. I heard no boy that, uh, he, uh, up there across the river in uh, Huntington. I don't know, you might you know, check the phone records or something, see if the West Virginia Huntington number comes up or something. But uh, I know he, he he come in a lot. I don't know who he is, but I know he come down like once a month. Chris told him come down once a month. Mm -hmm. But he was from Huntington, but you know, you might as well check the phone records. Sure. Because Chris didn't talk to a whole hell of a lot of people. If you talk to somebody in Huntington, that's the guy. Yeah, right. But. Other than that, but like I said, you know, all the huh. all the dope that comes into this country comes through life. And, I mean, it's and it's just it's it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you boys, you know, you said you ain't from around here, but if you've been here since the get go, I mean, my God, you can't see what this place is. Right. I mean, it's like turned into a complete shit hole. Mm -hmm. I mean, and it's like nobody gives a fuck. Right. But if there's anything else, like I said, is that all you needed or? 
Yeah, that's, I mean, that's it for now. We'll, we'll you know, if you think of something, if I think of something you give us a call. There's John's number on the back. You got mine because you called me on the phone. Uh -huh. You can give us a call. If you have any, like, if you go out through there or anything, get any in places out there, you go out there and look around. If, um, if you get out there and, like, get turned around or something, call me and tell me, and I can tell you where, where okay. to go, and you can tell me what you're looking at, and I'll tell you if it's right or not. Okay. So, well, I appreciate it. You know, if that'll okay. help you out. Oh, I appreciate it. But uh, like I said, you know, that's where he picked all of his, you know, stuff up. And that guy, the, the two, the two out there and toward the greenfield. And then that boy, they call him Fat Boy. Now, Red, the one you're, the same one you're talking about, he fucked around with that boy, that Fat Boy guy. But I've never met, I've never laid eyes on him. Mm -hmm. But he lived, Chris said he lived on uh, dry bone up from the rock quarry in Latham. Okay. Well, if you think of anything else, you just make sure you give us a call. I will. And I'll call you. You got our word. We're not going to be telling anybody about All it. All right. Well, so we'll keep our mouth shut. Well, time will tell on that one. Uh, okay. Well, you know, like I said, you know, uh, we, we, we don't share our information with people, you know, when we talk with Someone who doesn't want their information shared, we're going to honor that. Mm -hmm. you know, that's our word. Well, a lot of people said that, but we'll find out if well, it works any good. Well, no, but you, you, <laughs> I ain't saying it ain't. Right. Well, well, we'll find out. Right. Well, you, you know, we, you know, we answer our like boxes, said, but like it's I not going to go, 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 go to the sheriff's office. I got a number of respect for you boy, okay? But like I said, you know, these people down here, they ain't like right. most. Right. Well, mm -hmm. we're not going to be sharing it with the sheriff's office. You know, we've got a, you know, we got our bosses that we answer to, and 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 stuff like that. But I, I promise you, we won't be sharing. Them. All right. But yeah. anyway, I just want to stay in if, touch. If you do, no. you're just defeating your fucking purpose. Uh, no, right. don't don't worry about that. But we do want to stay in touch. So that's fine. Just call me if, if you need anything. Okay. You, know, you think of stuff, we'll think of stuff. Vice versa. So we'll get in touch with you. All right. Get in touch right. with me. And let me know. Okay. All right. And like I said. Uh, just give me a call. If you have any problems out there, call me and I'll, I'll walk you into it. All right. I appreciate and, uh, it. Other than that, but like I said, you know, it, uh, I can guarantee them to you, you know, like it means anything or not to you, you know, you probably hear shit every fucking day. But, uh, I, you know, it, there's no way any of his family done anything. Okay. Well, I appreciate you, know, you telling us that. You know, because they, they'll all starve. Right. I yeah. mean, they all the Chris took care of everybody. Right. You know, he took care of everybody. Well, that's what people said, was that he you took know, care of people. He took care of everybody. I mean, right. they'd all starve to death if it wasn't for me. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, but other than that, you know, it's, uh, and that shit, you know, they come up, we were talking about a damn Mexican cartel. That's bullshit. You didn't deal with any Mexicans? Mm, no, well, I don't know about... This new, I don't know his, his new deal, but I know, mm -hmm. you know, not that I've ever seen that was bullshit. Him and Dana get along well? Yeah, they, you know, they just. You never complained about anybody, you no, know, with her? No, no, Dana, she, Dana, Dana, Dana wasn't going to leave the cash cow, okay? okay? He took care of her, paid the bill and everything, and, you know, the, that divorce was, you know, more bullshit than anything just to keep people, you know, something happened to him, you know, he couldn't say anything, you know, to her right. or her, you know, that's how I, uh, you know how she goes. Right, yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, but, uh, you know, Dana, she, you know, she didn't, she was rattled, mm -hmm. you know, she just run around, you know, giving all spending, you know, Chris's money. <laughs> right, yeah, right. But after that, you know, that relationship, there wasn't nothing bad between them, no. Okay. Uh -huh. But, you know, but I know, you know, Dana, I don't think I've talked to her. Maybe, you know, the only time I ever talked to her is like, she come down with or something. I didn't talk to her much because, you know, she's always, she was probably, probably wanting to know, oh, what are you Chris doing and shit? Mm -hmm. And, you know. You don't think she knew what Chris was doing? Oh, I'd say she probably did. Right. But she was wanting, you know, I'd say she probably did know. Right. But, you know, Chris, you know, 
You know, he never would tell her anything. She gets the fucking piss because she'd ask, where you at? He's like, on the road. Right. <laughs> He's like, which one? <laughs> this one. <laughs> you know? yeah. But, you know, drive it. You know, he just never would tell her anything. He'd just drive her freaking crazy. Right. But, you know, but Chris did that to everybody. You know, I wouldn't even have him call me. I wouldn't even ask him, where are you going or what you doing? Or, you know, because I know, you know, that's what you get. On the road, driving. You know? Right, right. And, you know, Chris did he, he didn't talk. Right. You know, he didn't talk to nobody. Okay. You know, he was there, you know, me and him, like, when we hung out, we, you know, the only ones that ever hung out with me and him was, you know, sometimes Gary, sometimes Kenneth, you know, was around. But the rest of them motherfuckers I'd never even talked to because I didn't want to talk to them. Right. You okay. know. Here's, here's one thing, like I told you, we'd always think of something more. Um, it's been pretty consistent that people said that Chris said, Chris would make a comment, the storm's coming. He's really depressed. What, what do you mean? He's never said that to me. Never said that to you. He never said that to me. Not that they're coming, the storm's coming. No, no, he never said that to me. Okay. But, uh, well, if he said something like that to me, you know, I, you know, he, 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 What do you think that would mean? I don't know. He never mentioned it. I mean, nothing like that. But, you know, uh, man, yeah, I don't know. You know, he was drinking. He was drinking, yeah, and, you know, but he was worried. Yeah, he, something was bugging him, that's for sure. But other than, you know, I, I couldn't tell you on that one. He never said nothing like that to me. But, you know, Chris, you know, pretty well, too. But I'm going to tell you something else, though. He never told me, if somebody said them boys from Chuck Alvey and black boys come down there, and uh, they all got the big rugged there at his house. He never mentioned that to me either. Mm -hmm. But Carver said that happened, and a couple other people said it happened. I don't know. So they all got into it down there with a bunch of black kids and chilled coffee. But Chris didn't mention that to me, you know. Did you say when that was? I know, you know. But he never mentioned that to me. But, uh, you know, other than that. Chill it, coffee or Waverly? I don't know. Okay. But the thing is, you know, you know, if it was anything real serious, I know you told me. Mm -hmm. But other than that, you know, if I can, you know, if you come up with anything else you need to know, just give me a call. All right. And well, I appreciate it. You know, it. if uh, you get out there and go look at them, them places, so you, get, you know, just call me. I'll walk you in. All right. Well, I appreciate it. That's all right, man. Appreciate it. Uh -huh. You know, I can do anything for you. All, all right, right, buddy. Well, I appreciate hey, it. Don't. Uh, you, you got my word. Uh, okay. You know, I don't. You know, you know, I don't, I got enough freaking problems. I don't I need no more. I know. You know what I mean? But uh, other than that, have you talked to Vance, Henny? No, I haven't talked to Vance, no. We know that he's up there in jail and stuff yeah. like that, and so uh, probably we'll make a trip up there and talk with him. You know? Think he'll talk with us? I doubt it. Doubt it. But you could try. Yeah. You know, it depends on how pissed off he is about the fuck job he got. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, right. and, uh, you know, but you never, you never can tell. Right. But, uh, any, you know, everything I know about out there is just, you know, secondhand, thirdhand shit. Right. Anything Vance tells you about that, it's going to be firsthand shit. Okay. You know, so it might, you know. Now, Vance owed Chris uh, some money. You did? Not a lot. Right. You know, Chris you know, said he owed him like nine or 10000 that he was paying when he got out, but, mm -hmm. you know, but other than that, I don't know anything, you okay. know, but I know Vance, you know, you know, Vance ain't, wouldn't do nothing, you know, he wouldn't have been in nothing like that, but he might tell you something, you know, might help you. Right. Okay. Well, I appreciate that. All right. Appreciate it. Y'all be right. cool. Thanks. All right, you too. Be careful. So you have additional questions? Um, yes, Your Honor. I didn't know if the state, if the court wanted me to continue. We've been for two and a half hours. Uh, well, our break probably should be uh, lunch break whenever we do. Is now time to do that? Sure.
We're going to take our 15 minute break now, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so you'll have to be back in your uh, back at the jury room at a quarter till 12. While you're on break, do not discuss this case among yourselves or with anyone else. Do not permit the case to be discussed with you or in your presence. Do not form or express an opinion concerning the case. Uh, do not do any research concerning the case as to the facts or as to the law. Do not read, listen to, or view any reports or accounts of the case from any source at all. And have no contact with anyone involved with the case, uh, participating in the case, and that would include uh, uh, parties, counsel, or witnesses. Does counsel for either side have anything before we take our 15 minute break? Yeah. All right, we are then in recess until quarter to 12.
Thank you. Please be seated. Is counsel for each side ready to have the jury brought up? Thank you, Your Honor. We actually did have the opportunity to run the progeny from Ricks while we were sitting here listening to that statement. Um, that's a 2013 case. There is a series of cases after Ricks, including an Ohio State Supreme Court case, State versus Beasley, which is a 2018 case, 153, Ohio State 3rd, 497. The progeny of Ricks um, make it clear that these types of statements are admissible to show uh, the knowledge that law enforcement had that shaped their investigation or directed their investigation. Uh, what seems to distinguish Ricks from the, the Beasley case is uh, <coughs> statements uh, that connect the accused with the crime. And that's what you had in Ricks' case. So it was an out-of-court statement that, that basically pointed a finger at the accused. Uh, that, that created the confrontation issue. However, again, Beasley says, that as long as the statements do not connect the accused uh, with the crime charged, then they can be admitted to show, not, not for the truth of the purpose, or truth of the matter asserted, but to show what was in the mind of law enforcement and what directed their investigation. And again, you gave a limiting instruction uh, before that statement was played. It was an hour and 40 minutes uh, statement. If you want to take a, a conservative approach and give a, a limiting instruction again, we would not object. And again, it would be that uh, that statement was offered not for the truth of the matter asserted in the statement, but to show that um, show information that law enforcement had at the time they were doing this investigation, starting to turn the investigation uh, towards the Wagners. The other thing that I would point out is it is clear from that statement that nothing in that statement uh, that Billy Wagner said either implicated himself or did he point a, a finger at the, the defendant? It was full of false exculpatory statements and information that was inconsistent with other information that investigators were getting, uh, and again, caused them to take a harder look at the Wagners. And you'll hear testimony uh, later this afternoon from Agent Scheiderer, uh, who will talk about uh, the information that he gained or that he uh, got from uh, Agent Jenkins interview, how that was inconsistent with what he knew at the time, and how that, again, helped shape him to take a closer look at the Wagners. And that was the purpose of that decision. Judge, so just very brief. Yes. Um, you know, I think it's disingenuous to say that it's, that it's connected to our client when they've been arguing previously that it's part of the conspiracy count. And of course, our client is charged with the conspiracy count. So they can't have it both ways. Um, yes, our client's name mentioned that they're playing it to try to connect our client's father's false statements, as they argue, uh, into the conspiracy, which our client is allegedly part of, which we deny, but uh, that's their theory. And so there has to be independent proof of the conspiracy to commit aggravated murder before that type of statement can be played. That hasn't happened here. And, and we just don't <coughs> statements in further of the conspiracy. And we argued that at the bench, um, and uh, it's clear that at this point, the court's not comfortable with independent proof of the independent conspiracy. Again, it comes in for the other limited purpose that we talked about. However, later, uh, we believe that there will be sufficient evidence to prove the independent existence of the conspiracy. And at that time, we could come back to the court and ask for an instruction or allow us to argue um, substantive parts of, of that, that statement. So, Right. Your your motion, uh, Mr. Parker, is to strike the tape and for a mistrial. Yes, both. Uh, all right. 
the court will deny uh, each of those uh, motions. However, I will give them a, a limited, uh, limited instruction whenever we get the jury back up here. Are we ready for the jury to be brought back up? Yes, Your yes, Honor. Maybe you see it. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, before we proceed fur further, the court wants to reiterate the limiting instructions that I gave you before. The, the tape that was just played was not played uh, in order to show the, uh, the truth of any matters asserted in that uh, tape recording, but in order to uh, show. Uh, the information which the uh, agents involved, and that would be the witness here and, and uh, Agent uh, Trout, were given in order to explain steps subsequently taken in the investigation. That's the limited purpose for which that uh, tape was played, and uh, you're not to accept, you're not to receive it uh, as evidence of the truth of any matter asserted uh, during the tape recording. Now, as counsel, Wish to continue direct examination? Yes, Your Honor, thank you. Special Agent Jenkins, first of all, before we um, ask you any questions, um, you obviously were present in the courtroom when that audio recording was played for the jury, correct? That's correct, yes. And based on um, listening to that in its entirety, does that represent the entire interview that you conducted? with Billy Wagner on that date? Yes, it is. Okay. Yes, it does. I believe that was September 9th of 2016. That's correct. In the Kroger's parking lot. That's correct. Okay. So no conversation occurred with Billy prior to him getting in the car and then prior to when we last heard uh, the audio recording. That's correct, yes. Okay. And after that point, I believe you indicated to um, Mr. Wagner, to contact you if he thought of anything ever, um, did he ever contact you with any additional information? No, we were never. Okay, basis. No? Did he ever contact you with additional information? No, we were never contacted um, by him uh, throughout the investigation in reference to any of the information that we spoke about in the Kroger's parking lot. Okay. And you indicated, or I believe he, he indicated that the reason that he, um, you were asking him about a phone, about his phone, and he indicated that the reason he did, no longer had his phone was because he smashed it and then he offered you an explanation as that was because he kept calling 
Chris Sr., correct? That's correct, yes. And there's talk in, during that conversation um, between you and Mr. Wagner, and he keeps referring to a person named Latham? Yes, that's correct. And can you tell us who Latham is? Sure. So um, during, that, during that interview, Mr. Wagner, uh, as you heard, uh, would keep referring to an individual named Latham. Latham. And basically, who he was referring to is an individual named Skid Montgomery. Um, Skid Montgomery lives in and around the Latham area, owns a lot of property in the, in the Pike County area. And we'd learned through the investigation that there was always rumor that Skid Montgomery was a, a big, a large-scale marijuana dealer and that he would put hits out on people. Okay. And d did you also learn that Skid Montgomery is sometimes often referred to as Latham? Yes. Okay. And in fact, during that interview, you did confirm with um, Billy Wagner that that's who he was referring to as Skid Montgomery. Yes. The, at one point in time, I did uh, refer to Latham as, as uh, Skid, and he, he, he um, said that that was correct. And uh, Special Agent Jenkins, obviously Billy talked to you about um, an alleged um, business deal where Chris was expected to get a large, a large chunk of um, marijuana and uh, indicated that he, that it would represent a lot of money and that it would put people out of business. Correct? That's correct. Okay. And specifically um, indicated that he felt that that would be upsetting to Latham slash Skid Montgomery. That's correct, yes. Um, did any time during that interview, did he tell you that Chris was holding on to uh, $20,000 of his money? Objection. I'm sorry. Objection. The basis is. Getting into the substance. I'm sorry. They're getting into the substance. It's, certainly it's the content, but these are the, these are the facts that then later on they check up on or follow up on. Yes. Okay, Special Agent Jenkins, at any time during that interview, did Mr. Wagner indicate to you that Chris Sr. was holding on to money of his? Of, of Billy Wagner's? Correct. Yeah, I don't, I don't recall that. Okay. And at no point did he indicate that he was part of that deal that Chris Sr. was 
in regards to this large chunk of dope that was supposed to come in. That's correct. He did not. He also was indicating to you that none of the family members of the Rodins had committed these crimes, correct? That's correct, yes. Referred to this as a SEAL Team 6 job? Correct. And he says that this was supposed to come from someplace out west, but does he ever mention the state that it was to come from? No, he did not. And he was indicating to you that one of the reasons you could be assured that none of the Rodin family members did it is because they were a close family, correct? Correct, yes. And that one phone call that night would have been, there would have been many people up there protecting them. That's correct. Okay. And if you fought one of them, you'd have to... Well, yeah, I sustain that objection. The jury heard the tape. At any point in that interview, did he indicate that he was involved in the murders? No, he did not. At any point during that interview, did he indicate that Jake Wagner, George Wagner, or Angela Wagner were involved in the murders? No. I'm sorry? Well, the tape does speak for itself. I don't know that going over what was in it and what was not in it is the correct way to do that. I'm going to sustain the objection. Did you, at the conclusion of this interview, well, let me ask you first. You asked Billy Wagner about a fight that, regarding him pulling a pistol on Chris Sr. and Chris Sr. taking that away from him or whatever. Why, and he denied that, correct? That's correct, yes. Why did you ask him about that? So, during the investigation, there were tips coming in and other individuals being interviewed. Well, I'm going to overrule the objection and let him answer. So, we had information coming in that there was some type of an assault or a fight between Billy Wagner and Chris Roden Sr. So, that was the reason for that question, to see what his response, being Billy's response, was to a question of him getting in a fight a week or two prior to the murders. Okay. And again, this is during the time when you're trying to rule in and rule out everybody and anybody who had a conflict or did business with Chris or whatever you would follow up on. That's correct, yes. Or conflict with any of the victims, correct? Correct. Okay. Again, the information concerning what tips came in or not is not being introduced for the purpose of proving the truth of any tip that came in, only for the purpose of the officer explaining why he took certain actions. The jury may not accept the statements of any tipsters that may or may not have been made to the officer here for the truth of the matter stated in those tips. Thank you, Your Honor. And Special Agent Jenkins, at the conclusion of your interview with Billy Wagner, did you share the content of your interview with other members of the investigative team? Yes, absolutely. After every day of investigating and then also at each morning that we met at the command post, whichever one it may be, we did have briefings with all the other investigators so that 
Um, they knew what all information that I had gained during the previous day, what my, uh, my assignments were going to be for the, for the, the current day, and then so everybody else did the same. So that we were, you know, in lack of better words, we were all on the same sheet of music. Okay. And did that team also include uh, Special Agent Ryan Scheider? Yes, it did. And just regarding the content of that information, would that information then be, would you further investigate the content of that information from that interview or any other interview that you did? Yes, if there was uh, anything that um, uh, brought up a red flag or was a clue, then we would look at that further. Okay. I have no other questions, Your Honor. Does the defense wish to cross-examine now or after lunch break? Good afternoon, Agent. How are you? I'm fine. Good. Thanks for being here. Just a couple questions. Um, the voice we heard questioning Billy, that was actually your partner? Yes, yeah, so most of the interview was conducted by uh, Special Agent Trout. Right. And you were in the back seat? That's correct, yes. And you were secretly recording this, right? Um, yeah, they, we were recording it. It was a secret. Billy didn't know he was being recorded. Billy may or may not have known it was recorded, but it's pretty um, standard operation for us to record our interviews. You didn't tell him he was being recorded? No. All right, so it was a secret, right? Well, he, he didn't know. All right. And Billy was a very large man, is that right? That's correct, yes. Do, do you know about how tall he was? I would guess six six in that range. And how heavy he was? Um, maybe 280, 300 pounds in that range. But a very large range. That's correct, yes. And he, he kept talking about how his blood sugar was high that day. That's correct. Thank you, sir. I have no other questions. Any, any further redirect? Um, just for clarification, there were times during that interview where you did speak up and you did ask some questions. Correct. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Thank you. I have no other questions, Your Honor. Further calls. All right. You may step down. Thank you, Your Honor. We're going to take a lunch recess. Um, we will uh, be in recess until 1.15. Uh, at 1.15, the jury is to assemble at the jury room downstairs. We brought up my court personnel from there during the lunch break. You're not to discuss this case among yourselves or with anyone else, not to permit the case to be discussed with you or in your presence, not to form or express an opinion concerning this case, not to do any research concerning this case, either as to the facts or as to law from any source at all, and not to read, uh, view, or listen to any reports or accounts of this case from any source at all. You're to have no co uh, contact with any of the participants in the case, including parties. Uh, counsel or witnesses. Does, does uh, counsel for either side have anything further before we recess for lunch? No, All right, then we are in recess until 1.15.
good for you right there. Okay. These are, these are, that's my son. Okay. I'm gonna, thank you, sir. Appreciate it. One matter, uh, we've had our lunch break here, and everybody's been as present with his attorneys and the state's attorneys are all here, as is Mr. Scheider. Uh, maybe it would be better for the court to reiterate here uh, on the record one matter, and that is that there, uh, there had been a motion filed, number 96, I believe it was, uh, by the defense, and uh, there was an agreement made during the course of the argument of that. Uh, that the state uh, was not, uh, would not attempt to present evidence or make comments concerning an alleged uh, physical altercation between uh, the, uh, between, uh, I believe it was Billy Wagner and um, uh, Chris Roden Sr. Uh, and that was discussed just a moment ago in chambers. I thought it'd be better to put it out here on the record, uh, too, to in the presence of the defendant. But uh, I've, I've just, the discussion in chambers simply was that the state understands that and does not intend to present anything on that issue. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. We, we only asked that to um, address why Special Agent Jenkins asked that question to uh, Billy. We don't intend to put in any well, evidence. Well, I'm not sure that that we occurs. didn't want to get into that. I'm not. Uh, Judge, I mean, that's one of the reasons we objected to playing that recording, yeah. because getting into substance, some of which the state doesn't agree not to assume for various reasons. Well, the question was asked of him. There was a denial, I believe, on the tape, whatever the tape shows. But I, I don't think this. I think the state, based upon the agreement we had on 96, is precluded from attacking that denial because the, the uh, agreement was yes. that there wouldn't be anything presented. We have no intention of attacking that denial. All right. Yes, we just renew our previous motion. I, I'm sorry. We just renew our previous yeah, motion. I understand. All right. And of course, it's overruled the motions previously made on the record uh, to court mistrial and to exclude the tape or to strike the tape. Uh, is defense counsel and the state ready to bring the jury up? Yes, Your Honor. Yes. Be seated. The uh, state.
state may call its next witness. Um, thank you, Your Honor. The state would call um, Julie Hemsley. Right hand, do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, as you shall answer unto God? I do. You may you state my exam. Thank you, Your Honor. Good afternoon. How are you? Good afternoon. Um, if you want to go ahead and state your name again, just for the record. Julia Eveslage. Okay. And you previously testified in this case, correct? That's correct. And we've already discussed with you um, your current role at the Bureau of Criminal Investigations and um, your work in this case specifically in analyzing records and other things that came, um, that were um, obtained pursuant to both subpoenas and search warrants, correct? Yes. Okay. And can you tell us when you do that, um, when you go through records and such, um, is that information that you then share with the investigative team? Yes. Okay. You're very much a part of the investigative team. I would like to think, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and in your experience, does that then inform their investigation in people that they are ruling in or ruling out? Yes. Okay. And can you tell us, um, Ms. Eveslage, in this case, um, did you guys obtain um, Facebook records of the victims? Yes, one of our cyber crimes agents um, obtained a search warrant for all of the Facebook uh, accounts of the victims, and we reviewed those once the responses came in from Facebook. Okay. And were you part of the people who reviewed those responses? Yes, the responses were um, very large. There were tens of thousands of pages. Um, we had multiple accounts to review, so a team of people um, reviewed all of the information as, as best we could. Okay. And you indicated you had multiple accounts. Um, did you have Facebook accounts for all eight of the victims? Uh, we had an account for everyone except for Chris Sr. Okay. And you indicated there's tens of thousands. Could you um, describe for the jury how those records, Facebook records in particular, come to you? Yeah, um, the responses include a lot of different things from um, a person's account, messages, um, IP sessions, account information like um, an email or phone number, um, different things that Facebook um, retains on you know, your posts or your pictures, things that you, you publicly share or you know, privately share with your friends. Um, all of that is, is um, available to law enforcement through um, subpoena in some ways in a search warrant, um, and then we, we review that. So it came in a very, very lengthy PDF, as well as in another format that was slightly more accessible to us, but in terms of just the sheer volume of information, it was a lot. Okay. During that, the review of those um, Facebook records, did you find um, information in the Facebook account belonging to Hannah May Roden? Yes. And can you tell us um, why were they noteworthy to you? When we first started looking at Hannah's Facebook, uh, we found some statements in there and some of her messages that seemed to be in direct conflict with things that we had heard um, in interviews, particularly with Jake Wagner's interview. Um, and we noted um, just different, different statements about um, abuse in the relationship, um, issues with um, the Wagner's being controlling, things like that, um, and then just her kind of sense of um, discomfort with the situation with the custody of Sophia. Okay. And fears that um, they were trying to take Sophia from her. Okay. 
And was this information that you then brought to the attention of the investigative team? Yes. And Ms. Evans-Lage, I'm going to show you what's been marked as State's Exhibit GG. Um, okay. All right. Um, and Ms. Evans-Lage, can you tell us what we're looking at here? Yes, so I've created a PowerPoint uh, with a selection of um, conversations that I pulled from the search warrant return for Hannah Rodin's Facebook. Um, there's a cover sheet for each one that, that lists um, who the conversation was between and then the source data, which would be Hannah's Facebook. Okay. Um, and go ahead and go to the next page. And can you tell us what that is? This slide is a conversation that occurred on December 20th, 2014 between Hannah Rodin and Summer Cooper. Um, Summer Cooper wanted to know when she and Hannah would hang out. They were friends. She wanted to see her. Hannah says, I don't know. And she says, well, hopefully soon with a smiley face. And Hannah replies, yeah, I'm never at my mom or dad's. I practically live with Jake. And the date on that is December 20th of 2014. Correct. Go ahead. This conversation was between Hannah Roden and a friend, Zach Ryder. It occurred on uh, March 9th of 
court will sustain the objection. We're going to take a brief recess to um, uh, to go over a few things with the yeah. evidentiary matters. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're going to have a discussion here concerning uh, exhibits and so forth, and it's a, it's a type of discussion really that does not take place in the presence of the jury. Um, so notwithstanding the fact that you haven't been up here very long, we're going to have to send you back down to the jury room. Uh, Leave your notepads up here, of course. You'll be down there until summoned to come back up. You're not to discuss this case on yourselves or with anyone else. Uh, not to permit the case to be discussed with you in your presence. Not to form or express an opinion concerning the case. Uh, not to uh, uh, view, listen to, or read anything concerning the case. Not to do research concerning the case and have no contact with the participants. You'll be under the supervision of the bailiff and uh, be brought back up at an appropriate time. So with that, you can accompany the bailiff down to the jury.
Summer Cooper that was previously testified to here. And we'll also order that exhibit uh, GG uh, be withdrawn. I think that may have been put on the screen a moment ago. You are to completely disregard those two items of evidence that as they do not exist. We're going to start again with this witness and the state uh, may proceed. Now the witness, of course, testified and identified herself and so forth. And that part is allowed to stand. But these, these uh, the, the matters of that Facebook uh, uh, a message that was testified to is stricken and the exhibit is withdrawn. Uh, you may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Ms. Evans-Lage, I'm going to approach you with what has now been marked as State's Exhibit G, G1. It's two pages um, stapled together, and if, without telling us the content, can you tell us what that is? Uh, this was the cover sheet and then the um, content of a conversation between Anna Roden and Summer Cooper. Okay. And are those records that you obtained um, when you got the response to the court orders for the Facebook records belonging to Hannah Roden? Yes. Okay. And is that one of the conversations that you located and shared with the investigative team regarding um, custody issues? Yes. Handing you now what's been marked as State's Exhibit G, G2. And again, without hearing the content of that, you can identify that The first page is a cover sheet um, of the communication labeled communication between Hannah Roden and Zach Ryder. And the second page is the content of the conversation. And again, is that a conversation that occurred um, between Hannah Roden and Zach Kreider that you isolated and um, from the Facebook response that you received in this uh, case? Yes. Handing you it's been marked as State's Exhibit GG3. And again, if you can tell us what happened. The first page is the cover sheet, uh, labeled communication between Hannah Roden and Sammy Blanton. And the second page is the content of the conversation. Okay. And once again, was that a conversation that you identified and shared with the investigative team uh, because you thought it had investigative value? Yes. Any you what's been marked as State's Exhibit G, G4. And same instruction, do not share the content, but if you can identify what that is for us, please. The first page is labeled communication between Hannah Roden and Walter Arnold, and the second page is the content of the conversation. Okay. And again, is this one of the conversations that you identified and shared with the investigative team um, from Hannah May Roden's Facebook account? Yes. Okay. And specifically, that I had identified issues about custody and, and other things about the Wagner family. Yes. Correct. Handing you what's been marked as State's Exhibit GG5, and on this particular one, first do um, identify what that is, but then if you can also share the content of that conversation. The first page is a cover sheet labeled Communication between Hannah Roden and Tabby Breach, otherwise known as Tabitha Clater. Okay. Yeah. And who is that? George is Wagner's ex-wife. Okay. And can you go ahead and share that content? I'm sorry. Thank you. Your objection was. We're objecting to the content. Uh, over. Here. So 
the content is um, a conversation that occurred on March 28th, 2015. Uh, the first message is from Tabby saying, so Cody said you and Jake are going to be going through a custody thing. Hannah replies, yeah, trying to get a job. Another reply, we are supposed to go to court over it. Tabby says, well, you are the mother, so it shouldn't be hard on your part, but we are dealing with Angela. The second message, and we know how she gets when it comes to Vine and Suds. It's the end of this conversation as it's created. Okay. And again, um, Ms. evans Lage, is that a conversation that you isolated and identified um, that you thought would be of interest to the investigators in this case? Yes. Okay. And in fact, as a result of additional conversations, there were many more conversations that you isolated between um, Hannah Roden and Tabitha Clater as well, correct? Yes, one of many. Okay. And as a result of that, um, to your knowledge, did the investigators then make contact with Tabitha Clater to ask her about those messages and, and any other information she could provide? Yes. Okay. Approaching you now with what has been marked as State's Exhibit G, G6. If you could tell us. The first page is a cover sheet uh, labeled communication between Hannah Roden and Patricia Tess Ruggles. Uh, it's the mother of Tabitha. Okay, and then if you could uh, also share the content, please. Oh. So the content of the conversation, um, it begins on June 17th, 2015. Hannah's message, okay, thank you once again. I apologize for how I was when I was with my ex. I believed everything they did and did as they said. Reply from Tess. Yeah, the whole family is like that. Hannah says, yes, yeah, I realized that eventually. Tess says, eventually everyone does, LOL, but don't let them bullshit you. Hannah replies, yeah, they want me to sign Sophie over, not happening. Tess replies, don't do like Tabby did. I tried to get her to listen to me and she wouldn't. Hannah replies, I'm not. Sophie is my entire world. Okay, and again, can you tell us the date of that? on June 17th, 2015. Okay. And again, is that a conversation that you isolated and identified and shared with the investigators because you felt it was of important investigative value? Yes. Okay. State's Exhibit <coughs> GG7. If you could tell us what that is, please. The first page is a cover sheet labeled communication between Hannah Roden and Patricia Tess Ruggles, again, the mother of Tabitha. Okay. And could you please share with us the content of that conversation? The conversation uh, occurred on December 9th, 2015. The first message is from Hannah Roden. I know how they are. I was in their family for five years, and I know how it is to have a child with one of them as well. I won't sign papers. And my house is beyond clean, and they cannot prove me unfit, so therefore I won't lose Sophia. Hannah continues. In fact, I just got a new house that is bigger, more rooms, and everything. Tess replies, that's good. I'm glad to see you're doing good. I've dealt with them for years. Angela never liked me from the beginning because Freddie told everyone I was her daughter, which made Angela jealous but I don't give a rat's ass about any of them other than Freddie, Bob, and Robin. I'm, there's a misspelling. <laughs> I'm talking, you girl, telling you perhaps you don't believe the anything that family says. Hey, your baby back and tell them go fuck themselves. Sorry for what I perceive as blowing up, but Tabby has been in my ass about shit all week and I'm getting pretty edgy. I'm glad to see you are doing, so, doing good, I truly am. Hannah replies, I won't sign papers ever. It won't happen. They will have to kill me first. Tess replies, good, sweetie. Make sure you do, it says T, don't ever sign anything. That's the end of the conversation. And again, can you tell us the date of that communication? December 9th, 2015. Okay. And again, are those, is that a conversation that you identified um, amongst the records that you received from Facebook for the Facebook account of Hannah Mae Roden. Yes. And you brought it to the attention of the investigators because you felt it was of high investigative value. Yes. Okay. 
All right. And again, that's part of your job is to look through records and identify anything that might have investigative value, correct? Yes. Okay. And Ms. Eveslage, do the documents that you've identified in States Exhibit GG1 through GG7, I believe, um, do those fairly and accurately depict those conversations? Yes. Okay. In fact, you prepared those. Yes. Correct? Okay. Um, Ms. Eveslage, as a part of this ongoing investigation, um, did you ever have cause to look at the phone records of um, both Billy Wagner and uh, Chris Roden Sr.'s yes. phone accounts? And specifically, were you asked to identify whether um, any phone belonging to Billy Wagner, in fact, attempted to contact Chris Sr.'s phone um, after uh, April 21st of 2016. Yes, I did. Okay. Can you scroll down a little bit? Can you not? Okay. There it is. Okay. Previously, uh, Ms. Evans-Lage, you testified before this jury and you identified the phone records from the victims in this case. Um, w1 is what is showing on the screen now and that represents I believe the phone records that you looked at and um, created a display for the jury in um, in this case for Christopher Roden C. Correct? Yes. Okay. And I believe you previously testified but if you could tell us what the last contact that Chris Roden Sr.'s phone had with any phone belonging to Billy Wagner. So at the time, Chris Roden Sr. had two uh, known phone numbers that he used. Uh, the first one had the last outgoing voice call to Billy Wagner at 10.52 p.m. Uh, it was an outgoing voice call with a duration of three seconds. And then the final activity um, on Chris's phone ending in 0501 was at 10.55 p.m., another outgoing voice call with a duration of five seconds to Billy Wagner. And based on your training and experience, um, what is your belief as to um, how those calls were routed? Uh, routed to voicemail. Okay. And after that last um, phone call on uh, 1055, is that what it is? Uh, the final one, yes, at 1055. <laughs> okay. Um, did any of the phones belonging to Billy Wagner call call or attempt to call Chris Roden Sr.'s phone? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. And you looked at the records, yes. correct? Yes. Yes. We had one uh, phone that we knew belonged to Billy Wagner at the time of the homicides, and it did not make any further contact after April 21st. Okay. And, um, Again, Ms. Eveslage, is that something that, first of all, you were asked to look at? Do you know why you were asked to look at that? Uh, we looked at the outgoing activity on Chris Sr.'s phone, uh, the calls that we believed would be routed to voicemail, and then um, on the other end of the phone call, Billy Wagner's records, um, you know, we can see um, activity the following morning after the homicides would have occurred and the activity then. Um, so we were we were piecing together both sides of the conversation or like the contact, if you will. Okay, and and that's when you learned that he never returned those phone calls that he received from Chris Senior. Correct? correct. And then were you also then asked to look to see if there had been any other attempts in the days after the homicides on the part of Billy? Yes. Okay. And why were you asked to look at that? Um, I believe it was after uh, the interview with Billy Wagner where there was a statement made uh, about attempts to... I'm sorry. Contact that they just heard, Your Honor. It was... It was... Uh, I'll, I'll overrule the objection that testified. 
Go ahead. Uh, there was a statement made in the interview uh, that the investigators relayed to me uh, about attempts to contact um, Chris Sr.'s telephone after the homicides because um, of how emotional he was or um, a response to, to missing his friend. Um, so we looked at the phone records to attempt to isolate any of those contacts and none were to be found. Okay. And, and additionally, he indicated he smashed his phone because of that, correct? Oh, sustained. Did Billy say he did anything to his phone as a result of those <coughs> repeated attempts? Yeah. Basis is. She's asking this witness to get into the content of the conversation. I'm asking this. Well, I think she, one thing, I think she'd have some, have some basis. We'd have to have some foundation for the knowledge and so forth. So I, I will sustain the objection. Okay. Did the investigators share with you information regarding statements that Billy Wagner made regarding his phone that he had at the time of the homicides? Yes. And as a result of those conversations or that information, did you search Billy's phone records? Yes. You indicated that he said that he made repeated calls, correct? That's what I was told, yes. Okay. Well, I'm going to sustain the objection. The jury will disregard what the witness was told. All right. Once you searched these records, did you share the information that you found with the investigative team? Yes. I have no other questions, Your Honor. Defense may cross examine. Good afternoon. Hello. Good to see you again. Thank you for being here. Probably see you again, I assume. I'm sure. Um, just a few questions. Um, you testified about some Facebook accounts. You, you don't know who actually created those messages on the various Facebook accounts. Is that correct? I can't say for certain. Okay. And with respect to the phone numbers, you were provided two phone numbers that relate to Chris Sr., correct? Yes. You don't know if he had other phones. Uh, I'm not aware of any other phones that right. he was using at the time. All right. The same thing with Billy Wagner. You were provided with one phone number. Is that correct? That's correct. You don't know if he had. Correct. Thank you, Ron. I have no further questions. All right. Any redirect? One phone that Billy Wagner had at the time of the homicides, correct? Yes, there was one phone at the time of the homicides that we were aware of. Okay. And in fact, it was actually not registered in Billy Wagner's name, correct? That's correct. Okay. But you identified it because, well, how did you identify it as uh, his phone? I believe uh, Jake Wagner gave us the phone number in the interview, okay. this initial interview with investigators. Okay. And at some point, Billy Wagner also confirmed that as. That was his phone. Correct. Okay. Later, you learned. Um, I mean, he indicated that he destroyed that phone. Correct. Correct. And then got a new phone. Correct. Well, we we'll sustain the objection. We have to have some basis for the knowledge. Did you become aware that he got a new phone at some point after the homicides? Yes. Okay. Did you become aware that he indicated that he destroyed the phone that he had during the time of the homicides? Objection. Your Honor, he's questioning the phone numbers that she searched. I am isolating which phone number she researched and why. It's very pertinent to this. Well, again, so we have to have some basis for her knowledge. Okay. What is the basis for your knowledge? 
I'm looking to isolate investigative leads. Uh, I'm, I'm receiving information from all different kinds of sources, looking for um, questions that the investigators can ask um, friends and family, witnesses. Okay, specifically, what is the basis of your knowledge regarding the phone that Billy Wagner had at the time of the homicides? I'm not, I'm not sure I understand the question. Okay. How did you learn that he had changed phones? From the investigators. Okay. And what was your understanding of where they got that information? From the interview of Billy Wagner. And the phone that he had at the time of the homicides never showed any attempt to contact the phone, either of the phones of Chris Sr., correct? Correct. I have no other questions. Thank you for the calls. Thank you for the very short. I just want to keep this as simple as possible. You were given two phone numbers of Chris Sr. that you were told he had at the time of the homicide, correct? Yes. You don't know if he had a third or fourth phone, do you? I don't. Right. With respect to Billy, you were given one phone number that he allegedly had at the time of the murders, correct? Yes. You do not know whether he had a second or third phone, do you? Not at the time of the murders, no. You just don't know that? I was only aware of one phone number that he was using at the time of the homicides. Okay. Thank you very much. No other questions? Any further direct? The phone that you examined to see if there were any calls made was the phone that was identified as the one he destroyed because he had made the calls from that phone, correct? Judge. Uh, I'm going to overrule that letter, aren't you? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anything further from the state? If you're going to this witness, anything further from the state? No, thank you. You may step down. The state can call the next witness. Your Honor, the state would call to the stand uh, Special Agent Ryan Scheider. solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, as you shall answer unto God. I do. You see, you may examine. Thank you, Your Honor. Good afternoon. Hello. And if you don't mind, please state your name for the record again. Ryan Scheider. Okay. And Special Agent Scheider, we already heard from you previously. Um, regarding your role in this investigation and your ongoing role in this investigation. And when you testified previously, you talked about the very first days of this homicide investigation and then kind of the days and weeks and months that followed. Um, I'm just trying to orient the, the jury to where, where we left off. Um, and you had talked about running down all kinds of leads, correct? Yes. Based on tips that came in, and I believe you said eventually there was more than 1,100 tips that came in in this case, correct? Correct. Okay. And then also leads that you developed from interviewing various witnesses um, in this case, correct? Correct. Okay. And we also talked about um, you getting, seeking um, court orders for various phone records and Facebook records and any other records, I think there was a tower dump that you talked about, um, just all, all kinds of other activities that the investigative team was engaging in, correct? Correct. Okay. And we talked a little bit about um, other suspects, specifically on the very first day a suspect was developed, correct? Yes. Um, was fairly quickly ruled out after a search warrant and some other things were done, correct? Correct. And that part of the investigation um, certainly involved following any leads that the marijuana grow discovered at um, the two properties might lead you to, correct? Correct. Okay. Can you tell us, um, at some point, did the investigation turn 
towards considering members of the Wagner family as suspects? Yes. Okay. And can you tell us um, kind of at what point did that start to happen and what kinds of information were you receiving that led you to turn your attention to them? Yeah, obviously, it took a while to get the phone records as well as the Facebook records. It takes a long time to examine those things. Um, you know, many of those files are extremely large, several thousand pages. So, you know, once we started seeing the background of our victims, with specifically Hannah Roden, um, you know, there was concerns in there that there was some uh, potential custody issues uh, that was in the Facebook records themselves, and that is not what had been reported to us when we first made contact with Jake Wagner. Uh, he had indicated that everything was okay, that he had a good relationship with Hannah and there was no issues involving their child that they shared together. So that, that was a little suspicious, um, warranted a little further investigation obviously, but we were also conducting an interviews of friends and family who were reporting a similar you know, situation. So um, you kind of have conflicting stories, right? You have one side that's saying everything's okay and then you have records and family members and friends that are saying that's not true. So that kind of, you know, you need to investigate that. That's important, that's a lead. That's, that's something that needs to be ran down. And so that's what we started to do. Okay. And did you also receive information regarding, um, well, from an individual by the name of Charlie Gilly and another individual by the name of Jeff Packett? Yes, we did. And was there anything about that information that was concerning or that um, you considered? Yes. And what was that specifically? Both subjects reported a very similar story that they'd heard from Billy Wagner reporting a 2,000 pound marijuana deal for $800,000 and that Billy and Chris were in on the deal together and that Skid Montgomery found out and had, them, had the rodents killed because of the deal. And did, um, was there also information about money that Chris Sr. was holding on to for? Um, yes. And what was that? Mr. Tackett had provided us information that Billy uh, was concerned that $20,000 of his money was located in a safe at Chris's residence and that the sheriff's office now had the money. Okay. And can you tell us, um, Agent Shirer, is that, was that information ever shared with the public? No. Okay. And specifically, I just, you know, for, for the jury's orientation, um, there was lots of um, news coverage of this case. Um, Correct. Initially and ongoing, obviously. Um, was the investigative team careful to not disclose those kinds of details uh, to anybody? The contents of any search warrant that was executed on the crime scenes was never disclosed to any public member. And can you tell us, um, Agent Scheiderer, was there in fact um, $20,000 in that safe at Chris Sr.'s? There was approximately $27,000 in cash collected from the safe. Okay. And I believe we heard testimony earlier that that was placed in a safety deposit, uh, safety deposit. Correct. And it was a locked safe. We had to break into it to obtain it. Okay. And Additionally, did you, um, was the interview that was conducted with Billy Wagner by uh, Special Agent Jenkins and Special Agent Trout also something that factored into your decision? Yes. And can you tell us what about that? So as, as you've heard, we discuss each interview, we discuss each record, you know, that's a team effort, everything is shared, everybody um, is made aware of information. Um, specifically, Billy Wagner's first interview was um, concerning for two reasons. Number one, it took a long time to get him interviewed. He uh, avoided contact with 
with BCI. He didn't make it easy to get interviewed. Um, but then some of the things that he divulged during his interview were uh, what we would call false exculpatory statements. Okay. So did you yourself ever try to make contact with Billy Wagner? I had not. Okay. And can you tell us, um, were you aware that others were trying to make those contacts? Yes, there was numerous attempts to make contact with Billy Wagner. Okay. And specifically, in regards to this case, would you guys have a, a, a daily briefing every day on this case to share information? Yes, yeah, so we would have a daily briefing and then assignments would be made, uh, typically two agents to an assignment or at least two investigators, that type of thing. And yes, we would issue out assignments then and you know, mark whether or not they were completed or not. And uh, that's how we conducted business. Okay. And you said uh, false exculpatory. Can you just tell us what you mean by that? Uh, statements that are not true, that discredit or try to throw investigators off the, uh, you know, to cover his trails, basically, is what it is. So it's a lie to blame somebody else and to uh, throw the investigation off of you okay. in simplest terms. Okay. And... Did you also receive information regarding his phone? Yes. Um, and again, I think you've already testified that part of your investigation, you were attempting to get both DNA and phones from people who knew the victims, correct? That's correct. That included family members of the victims. Correct? Absolutely. And then any other close friends. Yes. Um, and that just helps you develop a story, especially since you did not have the phones of Mo the majority of the victims in this case. Correct. And so it was through that effort to, to obtain perhaps the phone of Billy Wagner when you guys learned that he no longer had the phone that he had at the time of the homicides, correct? Correct. And were you aware of what he said he did with that? Yes, I was uh, privilege to the conversation or the interview that took place between Billy Wagner and the agents. I also was able to review it and I heard the statements that he made about his cell phone at the time of the murders. Okay. And did that also factor into your decision? Or, or the, the, the Wagners being a focus of this investigation? Yes, it did. Okay, and why? because his statement that he contacted, or I'm sorry, that he destroyed his phone because he continued to contact Chris Roden even after the homicides was incorrect. His phone records stop at 10.55 p.m. on 421. So that was an inconsistent statement. That was not true. Okay. And did you also learn that he had never returned those last phone calls that his friend Chris Sr. made to him? There is no evidence that Billy Wagner ever made contact or attempted to make contact with Chris Roden's cell phones after the homicides. Okay. And additionally, um, you indicated that you guys were receiving not just the phone records, which you um, now talked about, but also um, the Facebook messages, correct? That's correct. Okay. And was there anything being found in those returns, the Facebook returns, that uh, concerned you as well when it came to the Wagners? Yes. Hannah Roden was expressing concerns about custody with her daughter, with Jake. And was there anything else that was being expressed regarding Jake and the Wagners in general? As far as um, their interactions, their physical interactions, the dynamics, etc. I mean, there was, there was contact of being controlling and that there was some abuse within Hannah's relationship. Okay. Her relationship with Jake Wagner. Correct, right? her relationship with Jake Wagner. Okay. And the information regarding controlling, was that just limited to Jake? No. Who else did it extend to? It, it, 
the Wagners, the whole entire family. Okay. And can you tell us, um, Agent Scheider, was there um, one particular um, Facebook message from December of 2015 that particularly alarmed you? Yes. And can you just give us the general gist of that one? It, it was a Facebook message from Hannah Roden to Tess, and the general theme of the message was that she would not sign papers ever. They would have to kill her first. And for context, that was just over four months prior to when Hannah was actually killed, correct? Correct. Okay. So as a result of this information, or was there any other information that you considered when um, turning your attention to the Wagners? Well, the fact that uh, during his initial interview, uh, Jake expressed there was zero issues uh, between child, you know, between him and Hannah or the, or the Roden family. I mean, and that's not what we were seeing in the and the Facebook messages or, you know, from other interviews. Okay. So as a result of that um, information and those concerns, what efforts did you take? Well, one of the things we need to do is obviously we need to get, you know, additional statements from uh, the Wagners. Like, we need to talk to them and we need to also uh, get their phones. Like, that's an important thing. Let's see what their side of conversations are. Okay. And at, as of that point, you had not been able to get the phones of any of them, correct? Correct. Okay. So can you tell us, um, on April 13th of 2017, um, did you make contact with Jake Wagner um, along with Special Agent Stefan Daniels? Yes, I did. And can you tell us um, what that contact was? It was at Peterson Road. Uh, basically, myself and uh, Agent Daniels went to uh, make contact with Jake. Basically, we were approaching the anniversary of the homicides, so we wanted to kind of touch bases with him again, get an additional statement about him, see what had changed from the, the prior time that we had talked to him. Um, and one of the main things was to ask him, uh, will you allow us to download or view the contents of your cell phone? Okay. And. You indicated that was at 260 Peterson Road, correct? Or you said Peterson Road, but was it 260 Peterson Road? Yes. Okay. And where on that property did uh, your conversation with Jake Wagner occur? It was in the fire pit area. I'm not sure if it was at a, I can't remember if there was a picnic table there or just benches there at that time. Okay. And can you tell us, um, did he permit you to have his phone? No, he did not. And did you express to him that other individuals had and the importance of it? Yes. While asking for his phone, one of the things that I explained to him is that other family members had provided the phone, meaning uh, the Roden family members and friends, um, because, you know, it provides us with a lot of information. So I, I made several attempts uh, to try to get that, that phone from him. Okay. And... During that conversation, did you learn that they had sold the farm? Yes. During that conversation with Jake, that's when he advised us that the farm had sold and that they would be uh, turning up, the new owner would uh, assume ownership on May 10th. Did you have a second contact or an additional contact with Jake Wagner at the 260 Peterson Road address on May 3rd of 2017? Yes, I did. Okay. And at that time, um, who all was present for that conversation? Myself and Special Agent Jim Mulford were the two agents that uh, went there. And when we arrived, the there was trucks and trailers in the driveway, and Jake, Angela, and George were outside packing uh, their belongings into those trailers. Okay. And when you arrived, um, you said Jake and Angela and George were outside packing belongings in the trailer. Did all three of those individuals remain outside? No, they did not. George excused himself and went inside. 
And Jake and Angela remained outside? Yes. Okay. And during that time, um, did you observe anything in the driveway that was of interest to you? Yes. While speaking with Angela and Jake, they were uh, willing to you know, speak with us. They didn't ask us to leave. Um, I just casually observed there was numerous fired cartridge, ca cartridge casings lying about the driveway all over the place. I, there was hundreds, if not thousands, of cartridges laying around, okay. casings. What part are you objecting to? I'm sorry. What he observed on the ground. No. Oh, oh. Thank you, Honor. And can you tell us, um, Special Agent Scheider, did you were you able to pick those items up and examine them closely? No. Okay. You did not attempt to do that. No. Correct. Okay. Did any of them, based on, I believe you testified previously that you were actually an armorer at some point? I've been a firearms instructor since 2007, and I'm also a Glock armorer, so I've been to firearms armor school as well. So. Okay. And were you able to tell from your vantage point, not bending over and picking them up or examining them closely, um, did any of them appear to be of interest? Yes. So the crime scenes, we were aware that there was a 40 caliber used. A 40 caliber uh, cartridge casing was found at one of the crime scenes. You guys heard about that. Um, we also knew that there was potentially a 30 caliber rifle that was used and 22 long rifle. What I observed that day, I saw cartridge casings that appeared to be from a rifle. Um, they weren't like a 22 caliber rifle, so they weren't 22 rim fires, but they definitely weren't like 223s or 556s. I just couldn't tell what caliber they were. And then I also saw cartridge cases that were, or casings that were consistent with pistol calibers. Specifically to me, it looked like they were nine millimeter or 40 caliber. I couldn't tell from my vantage point. Obviously I'm standing up and I did not examine them. Okay. No, 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 no. Did you also um, ask Jake to confirm his current phone number at that time? Yes, I did. And did he do that? Yes, he did. Um, did he also provide you information that he was going to switch phone carriers? Yes. He also discussed the move to Alaska and that he would be changing his service from Verizon to AT&T because Verizon uh, systems did not work in Alaska. And did Jake also ask you anything about Brentley? in that, uh, co during that contact? Yeah, so during that contact, you know, we were casually talking and one of the things that Jake was concerned about was if Brentley, which would be Frankie's son, had, a, had witnessed anything the night of the murders and, and asked if he'd ever been questioned about that. Okay. Um, did Angela provide you any information about uh, Brentley as well? Yes, Angela advised us that she was aware that Frankie had visitation every weekend with Brentley and that he would be at Frankie's residence on the weekends. Okay. And did Angela also acknowledge um, traveling to the Union Hill Road uh, locations? Yes. Additionally, Angela explained that she would make her way intentionally to Union Hill Road when she was out running errands to specifically check on Sophia while she was in the custody of the rodents. And can you tell us, um, was there also a conversation with Jake um, regarding various punishments um, for this kind of a crime? Yes. One of, the, one of the things that I like to do when I'm talking to somebody that I suspect is involved in a crime I'm investigating is oftentimes I will ask that person what do you think the appropriate punishment is for somebody that's, you know, accused of, of this crime to, to elicit their response? So I did ask him that. Okay. And what was his response? It depended on whether or not they were a trigger person. And during that 
um, time, Agent Scheiderer, did you make any further requests for Jake's phone at that particular contact? No, I did not. Did you have contact with Billy Wagner on May 4th at the location of the Flying W? Yes, I did. Okay. And specifically the Flying W belonging to whom? And who, who does that residence belong to? The Wagner family, specifically Frederica. Okay. And it's on Camp Creek Road. All right. And can you tell us um, during that conversation, did Billy also talk about um, going to Alaska? Yes, he did. And what did he indicate about that? He acknowledged that they had sold the farm at Peterson Road and he uh, expressed that he was not thrilled with moving to Alaska, that he didn't want to because of, he had a sick father there at the Flying W that he needed to take care of, but uh, the other family members wanted to move to Alaska and he also told us that his boys, Jake and George, had secured good employment in Alaska. And I believe you provided a date they were leaving and a date they were going to return. Okay. And did he also at that time indicate that he had two phones? Yes. Okay. One of the discussions we had with Billy was to verify any telephone information with him. And at that time, he advised us he had a Samsung phone and an iPhone 5 and provided the telephone numbers of those devices. Okay. And can you tell us, um, did you then make any attempts to actually obtain the phones of either Jake Wagner or Billy Wagner? Yes, there was concern that if they changed carriers and went to Alaska that we would lose those devices. That. Um, you know, a lot of times when you switch carriers, they're not compatible, so you lose devices. So at that point, we applied for and received search warrants for both of Billy's phones and Jake's phone. Okay. And can you tell us at that time why you did not seek to get the phones of either George Wagner or Angela Wagner? Why did you focus on Jake and Billy at that time? They were the two closest to the rodents. Okay. They had the, the relationships with them, the okay. direct relationships. And can you tell us, um, I believe you indicated that the, um, the home had been sold and that the new owner would uh, take possession on May 10th, correct? Yes. Um, so was there um, an expedited review of the phone records belonging to Billy and Jake Wagner? After the search warrant? Yes. Yes, so we executed the search warrants and obtained those devices. They were taken back to the command post uh, where cyber agents uh, did an extraction. It's a download of the phone. We call it an extraction. And yes, that was expedited. Okay. And can you tell us if you saw anything of interest on Billy's phone? On both of Billy's phones, there was interesting text messages from George. Okay. Um, HH, okay. I'm going to show you first what's going to be marked as State's Exhibit HH1. I guess maybe we'll do 1A on this first one. And
Okay, and can you tell us, um, Agent Scheider, what we are looking at there? Yes, in, in simple terms, this is an extraction report from a cell phone. So when our cyber agents uh, download a phone, you know, we get a lot of different data, but one of the things we get is a, it's kind of like a PDF report that allows you to kind of jump around and see things. And as, if you look at this, if you select SMS, that's text messages, and this would be a text message uh, report for Billy's Samsung phone. Okay, and there appears to be a highlighted um, entry there. Can you tell us what that is? There is an entry, a text uh, highlighted from May 3rd, 2017 at 433 UTC. Okay, and can you tell us what UTC means? It's a universal time that the cell phone carriers use, so you have to subtract four hours to convert it to Ohio time. Okay. So, so it would be 1233 p.m. Okay. And can you tell us, um, did that have significant, that date and time have significance to you? That is the same date and same time that myself and Agent Mulford were in the driveway speaking with Jake and Angela where the trailers were present and they were packing the trailers. Okay, and George was present as well? He was briefly until he excused himself and went inside. Okay, and go ahead and tell us um, what message we are looking at and what it says. Message number four is an inbox, which means it's a message to Billy and it is from George, his son, and it, sa and it says, don't come down till I text you, got company. Okay. And was there a response um, on that phone? No. Samsung phone, okay. And HH1B will be the phone number 740-529-9539, the iPhone. Okay, and if you can go ahead and tell us what we are looking at there. This is gonna be a similar extraction report. This is reference Billy Wagner's iPhone 5. And does it have that corresponding number ending in 9539? Or is that not listed? On yes. There? Okay. And can you tell us again what we are looking at? Uh, or, I'm sorry. So again, the highlighted entry, yes. if you can tell us what So again, is. we're looking at SMS messages, text messages, and we're looking at numbers 18 and 19. Number 18, I'm sorry, number 19, it's, a, it's in reverse order, would be a text message that Billy's phone received from George. The, the date and time is May 3rd, 2017, 433. PM UTC, again, 12.33 Ohio time, and it reads, don't come down till I text you, got company. Identical word for word message. Uh, of the previous one, of correct. the previous one, sent to both phones belonging to Billy Wagner. Correct. And again, did that come from George Wagner? Yeah, it came from that device, yes. Okay. And was there a response to that on this phone? The um, response is at 433.54, and it is okay from Billy's phone. And how many seconds later does he respond? Less than a minute. Okay. Did you also um, look at Jake's phone and 
Did you find anything of interest on that phone? Yes. And can you tell us what you found? And again, these were expedited reviews of these records. It wasn't like we had days to go through these. We literally downloaded these phones and started going through them quickly. But one of the most interesting things that we found on Jake's phone at that time was under the notes section, and it was a list of guns owned by the Wagners or purported to be. Uh, so basically there's a list with each Wagner's name and then a list of guns underneath each of those names.
court will overrule the objection. Thank you, Your Honor. Agent Scheider, I'm going to show you what is going to be marked as State's Exhibit HH2. What is marked as State's Exhibit HH2. Okay. And can you tell us, first of all, Agent Scheider, what are we looking at? This was, again, this is an extraction report or a snippet of an extraction report related to Jake's iPhone that we took in May of 17. And this was found in the notes section of the phone. And it is a list of firearms and associated Wagner names. Okay. And can you tell us, if you can just, well, go through those and tell us which guns are listed belonging to who and what date was that list created? Pursuant to the report, I'm having trouble seeing that. February 11th, 2015. Okay. Thank you. And go ahead and tell us what guns are listed there. Starting at the top, the list starts with George's, indicating possession. And it says Glock 17, 9mm, Beretta 96, 40 caliber, Taurus revolver, 357, Remington 514, 22, Remington Target Master 22, Winchester 94, 30, 30, Enfield Mark II, 303, Enfield Mark II carbine, 303, Remington 870 camo, 12 gauge, Remington 870 trap, 12 gauge, Remington 1187, 12 gauge, Ruger M77, 270, Ruger M77, 22 Hornet, Remington Woodmaster 30-06, Ruger M77, 22, CZ 22, and SKS 7.62 by 39. Objection. And who else is listed on that list? Moms, dads, Sophie's, and Jake's. Okay. And what were the guns listed belonging to mom? Taurus 145, 9mm, American 22, and Cricket 22. Okay. And then is dads next? Couch gun, 12 gauge, bull barrel, 22 mag, 22, 20 gauge, over, under. I'm guessing that means Kodiak 30-06, Beretta 92, 9mm, Derringer, Ruger MK2, 2245, CZ223, Kel-Tec PMR 30, 22 mag. And then Sophia's? Cricket 22. Okay. And then Jake's? Remington Score Master 22 Black, Remington Target Master 22 Satin, Ruger 1022 Olive Green, Rossi 41022 Olive Green, Remington 870 Wingmaster, Remington 870 Wingmaster Black, Remington 870 Trap Black Gloss, Ithaca, that's spelled incorrectly, but I believe it's supposed to be Ithaca M31 12 gauge black, Mossberg 835 12 gauge, Winchester 94 3030 olive green, Winchester 94 17 black, Rossi 45 LC, which would be long colt, Browning A bolt 270 Winchester mag, Silver, Springfield A303 gloss black, Springfield 1903 satin black, Enfield MK1 303 satin black, Enfield MK2 303 black, Taurus 145 Millennium 45 ACP, Colt 1911 22, and Thompson Contender Triumph 50 cal. Okay. And that is at the extent of the list that you um, was extracted from the phone belonging to Jake Wagner. Yes. That you seized pursuant to a search warrant. Yes. Okay. And can you tell us, um, did you review that list with anybody in particular? 
It was reviewed among the agents present, as well as Matt White from the Firearms Lab at BCI London. And at that time, um, did you learn if any of those weapons located on that list might be, uh, might, were consistent with the caliber of weapons used um, in the homicides? Yes, the, the firearms that would be of interest would be all the 30 calibers. So I believe there's four or five listed under George's name that could be con con potential contributors to the 30 caliber ammo that was used at Chris Sr.'s residence. And then there's also 22 caliber uh, weapons that uh, were listed under George's name as well as Jake's name that could be potential contributors for scenes two and two and three, which would be Frankie's residence and Dana's residence. Okay. And at that time, obviously, you do not have possession of these guns. This is just a list of the guns. Correct. Correct. Okay. And again, the, those phones were seized um, on May 5th. Um, do you ultimately, uh, well, is that the extent of items of interest that you found during that quick review that you said you did of both the phones of Billy Wagner and Jake Wagner? Yes. Okay. Obviously, a more extensive, or maybe not obviously, but a more extensive um, search of those phones was conducted later. Correct. And ongoing. Did you return um, the phones belonging to um, Billy Wagner and Jake Wagner to them? Yes. Okay. And specifically on May 8th, did you um, return Billy Wagner's two cell phones to him? Yes, we did. Okay. And if you can just explain to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury, once you have extracted the information from that phone, um, then you have the um, extent of the contents that were on that phone, and, and giving them back the phone does not change or alter that, yeah. correct? Since we'd already done the download, we had whatever was in that phone at that time of that download, so there was no harm in us giving that device back to Billy or those devices. There was two devices for Billy, and we did not want to keep those devices and have him go out and obtain a different device with a different phone number. So we return the devices. Okay. And at that time, um, did you have any conversation with Billy Wagner about them going to Alaska? Yes, I did. And what was that? Again, the, the conversation about Alaska came out, his concerns about you know leaving his, his sick father at the Flying W. Um, additionally, he had provided that Jake had obtained employment, a really good job in Alaska, and he gave us a, an approximate time frame of when they would be leaving, and apparently they were going to travel there and then come back to Ohio, uh, and so he gave us an approximate leave date and an approximate return date. And do you recall what those dates were? Um, he said that he was going to leave either that night or the next day. And that I believe his return date was less than a week okay. from that time. Okay. So it was the 8th when you were talking to him. So he indicated he was either going to leave the 8th or the 9th and then come back less than seven days later. Correct. Okay. And did you ever also have a conversation with him about, his, uh, about the boys and their relationship with their mother? Yes. And what was that? Billy seemed like he wasn't real happy about having to leave his father at the Flying W, but he explained that uh, he felt pressured to go to Alaska with the family. That's what the family wanted specifically. That's what Angela wanted. And he described Jake and George as being mama's boys. And did he also tell you what the key to a happy marriage is? Happy wife. Okay. And specifically, if she tells you to do something? You do it.
And at that time, did he also indicate to you that, that his boys had been homeschooled and that nobody else had ever taken care of them other than? That was part of the conversation, yes. Okay. And I believe he described Angela as the world's best mom. Objection. Okay. Others leading, I saw sustaining objection. How did he describe Angela as a mother? As the world's best mother. Did he indicate that he was also going to try to talk them out of going to Alaska? Yes, he was not. He indicated to us anyway that he was not for moving to Alaska. Okay. Did he indicate where he preferred that they go? He wanted them to stay around uh, somewhere close so that he could still take care of his father. So I, I believe he had said that uh, he wanted to find a farm in Jackson. And was that the extent of your contact on May 8th with Billy Wagner? Yes. Can you tell us where that contact was? Driveway of Flying W Farms. Okay. Did you also um, inform Billy Wagner that you were going to be returning Jake Wagner's phone as well? I don't think we told him that at that time. Okay. And can you tell us if you did uh, return Jake Wagner's phone that day? No. Okay. And tell us if you did, had contact with Jake Wagner. Yeah, so um, when you're at the Flying W up at the top, you, know, you guys saw it at the jury view. Um, so at the top, up in the driveway around the residence, you do have cell phone service. But as we left and we went down the driveway, we lost cell phone service, including all the way through Camp Creek Road to 104, 124, 104 at which time I got a call from Jake uh, indicating that he'd been made aware that we had just left the Flying W and had spoke to his father. And was he was inquiring about his cell phone. Okay. And during that conversation, did you also discuss them going to Alaska? Yes. And did he indicate whether or not he had a job? He stated he had a job interview, that they had not secured employment. And did he indicate to you um, a leave and return date at that time? Yes, he did. He stated that they would be leaving that night or the next day, and their return date would be on the 22nd of May, which was different from what Billy had told us. Okay. By about a week or so, correct? Correct. And... As a result of all of this information that you had received, both the extraction from the cell phones belonging to Billy Wagner and Jake Wagner, um, along with the um, conglomeration of the information you'd received prior, um, knowing that they were going to Alaska, et cetera, and then all the information that you already talked about as far as what um, concerned you about the Wagners, um, what did you do as a result of that? applied for and received a search warrant for 260 Peterson Road. And can you tell us uh, what date did you execute that search warrant? The initial search warrant was executed May 10th, which was the day the new owner took possession of the property. Okay. And can you tell us, was that also based on your uh, observing shell casings to be in the driveway? Yes. Correct? Okay. And clearly you wanted to be able to examine those closer to see if they had any relevance or not. Correct. Correct. Okay. And can you tell us, um, Special Agent Scheider, if you participated in that search warrant at 260 Peterson Road on May 10th of 2017? Yes, I did. And before we go into um, the exact um, details of what was found, did you, were you able to, um, as part of that um, initial search warrant, able to uh, recover some of the shell casings and examine them? We recovered shell casings and, and they were sent to the lab to be examined, yes. Okay. And when I say the lab, the BCI lab in London, again, to Matt White. And 
as a result of that um, examination of the shell casings, did you return to uh, Peterson Road address on May 12th to do a, a, a more extensive search warrant? Yes. Okay. Additionally, did you get a search warrant for a second location on May 12th? Yes, we did. And what location was that? I don't remember the numerics, but it was on uh, 41 on the other side of Peebles, and it had been one of the places that we took you for the jury view. It would have been the farm that we had to look through the trees and that we couldn't go, we couldn't see the driveway because of the traffic. Okay. One of the last places I believe we did on the second day, that was so long ago. No, I don't remember which day, but yes, it was the last place, yes. Okay. And how did you um, know to go to that location? While we were executing the search warrant at 260 Peterson Road on May 10th, we were approached by people that told us, uh, neighbors that came up and said that the Wagners had loaded their personal belongings up into trailers, which I had observed earlier, and that they were storing them at a location on uh, State Route 41 or US 41. Okay. Not sure if it's a state route or a US route. Okay. And then did the investigative team make efforts to locate precisely where on State Route 41? Now? Yes, we sent people over there and from public access, they were able to view those trucks and trailers uh, and they were consistent with registrations that we knew were uh, related to the uh, vehicle registrations that were uh, related to the Wagner family. And did you use that information then to apply for the search warrant regarding that location? As well? Yes, and it was granted. Okay. And did you participate in that second search warrant of 260 Peterson Road? Yes. On May 12th? Yes. Okay. And did you participate in or were you aware of the search warrant being conducted at State Route 41 at, uh, on the same date? Yeah. So I was actually assigned to the, the 41 search warrant, but at times I had traveled back and forth to discuss what was being found at each location. Okay. And I was obviously in communication with the teams that were at Peterson Road and 41 at the same time. Okay. And just for the record, at this time during May of 2017, were you in fact the lead agent at that Yes, time? I was. Okay. Oh, yeah, the pictures. So, Special Agent Scheider, I'm just going to start showing you some pictures um, from the search warrant conducted on May 10th, that first kind of initial um, search warrant that was conducted. Okay. And... So, AA1, which is 3480. And can you tell us what we're looking at there? This is the mailbox with the letters, the numbers 260 on it. And this would be the mailbox in front of 260 Peterson Road in Adams County. Okay. And States Exhibit AA4, which is 3481. This would be an overall of the residence that the Wagners lived in on 260 Peterson Road. Okay, and again, where are we, um, where, where is that picture taken from? from? From the, it appears from the mailbox area. Okay. And before we go any further, I guess I should ask you to indicate to us, um, you indicated you participated in the search of that um, 260 Peterson Road on this date, May 10th, correct? Yes, I did. 
And as part of your participation, um, were you responsible for looking inside of the residence? Yes, I was. Okay. And again, at this time, on May 10th, had the Wagners already moved out of that location? Yes, the reason, one of the reasons for the search warrant at this timing was because this is when the new owner has taken possession. So we wanted to touch that property before he actually touched it. He, she, the new owners. So we wanted to get it as soon as the Wagners you know, were out of it. Okay. And had the new owners moved in yet? No. Okay. Okay. States Exhibit AA39, which is 3504. Can you tell us what we're looking at there? This is the entryway into the uh, house on 260 Peterson Road. And then State's Exhibit AA40, which is 3506. And can you tell us what part of the house we are looking at there? This would be inside that doorway. And again, I don't know what this room was used for, but it was kind of like a mud room or a breezeway uh, just prior to entering the main part of the residence. Okay. And again, any items that appear there um, would belong to the Wagners as opposed to the new owner. Correct? This is the way we found it that day after we made entry into the residence. Okay. But, and this residence was secured before we got there. So the doors were locked. We are the ones that, that unsecured the doors. Okay. And can you tell us during this search what you are specifically looking for? Obviously, our focus is on anything firearm related, specifically anything in, these, in this property that could be linked back to the crime scenes. Okay. Um, State's Exhibit AA41, which is 3586. 3586. Yes. And can you tell us what we're looking at there? This is the shelf that you saw in the previous photograph, and there's an item of interest on the shelf. Okay. And what is that item of interest? 22 long rifle cartridge. Okay. And why is that of interest? Because a 22 long rifle was used to kill five people. So the two at scene two and the three people at scene three. States Exhibit AA42, which is 3588. And can you tell us what that is? This is a close up of the 22 long rifle cartridge. And it is of Remington brand because as the Remington head stamp, the same that was found in the crime scenes. And that is an unfired cartridge. Case. This is, yes, this is a complete cartridge containing the bullet powder, yes. Okay. And States Exhibit AA43, 3507. Can you tell us what we're looking at there? This is making your way into their residence and it appears to be a living room. And again, I don't know what they used it for, but general appearance, it appears to be a living room, family room area. Okay. And States Exhibit AA44, which is 3589. Can you tell us what we're looking at there? This is my foot, and then this is a fired cartridge casing laying on the carpet. Okay, and states exhibit AA45, which is 3590. Josh. 
over the water. Can you tell us what we're looking at there? This is a close-up photograph of a fired cartridge casing. Okay, and that is the same one that you just showed us up? Correct, it's just a, a close-up. Okay. And can you tell us what kind of um, fired cartridge casing that is? I believe it turned out to be a 4570. Okay, and what is a 4570? It would be a 45 caliber rifle cartridge, and it's just the 70 as a designation. So it has to do with um, the length and stuff of the cartridges. Okay, and was that of any interest, or did that correlate to any of the ballistic evidence in this case? No, it did not. Okay. Oh, Council approach you just a minute.
exhibit, uh, I believe it was AA45, was it not? I don't know. I put it away. AA45. It dealt with a 45 caliber uh, rifle cartridge. The court was going to order that particular exhibit stricken, just that one. And the jury is instructed to disregard the testimony concerning that particular uh, shell case. And you may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. State's Exhibit AA53, which is 3517. Can you tell us what we are looking at there? I guess you're not looking at it yet, are you? I see it. Okay. Yes, right. it's the kitchen at 260 Peterson Road. Okay. A photograph of the kitchen. Okay. And State's Exhibit AA54, which is 3591. Can you tell us what we are looking at there? This is inside one of the kitchen cabinets of the kitchen. And in the corner, there are 22 long rifle cartridge cartridges. Okay. Again, unfired, correct? That's correct. Okay. State's Exhibit A5. State's Exhibit AA55, which is 3592. What are we looking at there? This is a close-up of those 22 long rifle cartridges, Remington brand, same as the crime scenes. And did you, in fact, um, collect each of those items? Yes. Going to hand you first what's been marked as State's Exhibit AA110. If you could look at that and tell us if you recognize that. Yes, I do. And what do you recognize that as? Exhibit AA110 is a manila envelope. It has a BCI evidence label number one on it. And the description is live ammunition, quantity one. The note is 22 rimfire, and it shows it was collected from 260 Peterson Road on May 10th, 2017. Okay, and that was that initial one that you saw in the breezeway um, on the shelf, is that correct? Yes, and, and it does on the label, it just says location collected shelf by entry door. Showing you what's been marked as State's Exhibit A111. If you could tell us what that is, please. Exhibit AA111 is a manila envelope that is sealed and it has a evidence number two sticker on it. Description live ammunition quantity 5, 22 rimfire from 260 Peterson Road. The date is May 10th, 2017, and it says the location kitchen cabinet. Okay. And again, Agent Scheider, um, why did you collect those particular items? These items were collected because at scenes two and scenes three, we collected evidence that a 22 long, uh, long rifle, specifically Remington brand ammunition, had been used to kill five people. Okay. 
Overruled. And you indicated that um, there were other items that were collected from outside of the residence, correct? Yes. And were those collected by you or somebody else? Somebody else. And who was that person? Brian White. Agent Brian White. Okay. And was all the evidence that was collected on May 10th, again, submitted to the lab, specifically Matt White, to review? The firearm evidence was, yes. Okay. And again, as a result of that, a second uh, and more extensive search was conducted on May 12th. Correct. Okay. Was that the extent of the ammunition that you collected from the inside of the residence at 260 Peterson Road? On May 10th, yes. On May 10th. Yes. yes. I have no further questions, Your Honor. Right. The defense may cross the room. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We know each other, right? That's correct. Okay. Just a few questions. Um, with respect to the photographs that you just looked at and marked, um, showing what's been previously marked, the State's Exhibit AA55. Mm -hmm. 3592. You see that, sir? Yes. Um, how would you describe that, what you see there? It's a corner of a kitchen cabinet that contains what I can see now is five 22 long rifle cartridge. And is there something on the tip of the cartridge? On the tip of the cartridge? Yes. Do you is mean that a brass bullet? finish? Is that a brass finish or a wax finish? There appears to be a lead bullet on the end of it. Is there a difference between a brass finish and a wax finish? I mean, there's different kind of bullets, yes. Okay, do you know which one this is? All I see is lead on this, on these tips. Okay. If, it, 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 I'm, I'm assuming you mean tip bullet. Is that, are you, are you using the same terminology? Is that the same thing? I'm trying to. Okay. Okay. There, you remember previous testimony that there was a brass finish uh, on some of the ammunition recovered, I believe, at the crime scene. Where there were 22. Correct. Do these are these the same brass finishes recovered from the crime scene? I can't. They can't be the same because they're here. They're at Peterson. They're not the same item. Okay. But the items at the crime scene had a brass finish. Is that correct? Some of them did. Yes. Some of them did. Correct. Do these particular ones that you see in the photos have a brass finish? No. And showing you AA42, which I believe is 3588. Um, that's the one on the shelf, is that correct? Yes. And it looks similar to the previous one in the cabinet, correct? Yes. And so it's got the same characteristics. It appears it's not a great photograph, but yes. talked a few 
few minutes ago about um, seizing the phones of Billy Wagner, correct? Yes. Two phones? Yes. All right. And also seizing the phone of Jake Wagner, correct? Yes. All right. Did you ever seize the phone of George Wagner? No. And you talked about the phones, the phone numbers at least, of Chris Sr., correct? The two phones? Yes. That he had two phone numbers? Correct. All right. You never recovered his... Did you recover his phones? I'm trying to remember. No. I didn't think so. All right. So Chris Sr.'s, you did not recover his two phones, correct? Correct. But you had his two phone numbers? Correct. Okay. Um, do you know what a burner phone is? Yes. What is a burner phone? My interpretation of what a burner phone or my experience is, it's typically a phone that somebody purchases to conduct uh, activities they don't want other people to know about. So it could be as simple as uh, you don't want your spouse knowing who you're contacting to you don't want your friends knowing who you're contacting, or it could be used for criminal activities. And oftentimes a burner phone, what I call a burner phone, if you, if you disagree with me, please say so. But oftentimes a burner phone is one that you uh, buy without service through an established carrier. Is that correct? I mean, it could be, yes. It's like you go to a store, there are various stores you can go to, buy a phone, and it has so many minutes on it, correct? Just because it's a prepaid phone does not mean it's a burner phone. That, that's correct. But oftentimes burner phones are prepaid phones. They can be. I would be. never, I'm not going to say that they, I would not testify that they oftentimes are, but they okay. can be. They can be. It's common in the drug business, isn't it? I, mean, I haven't worked narcotics for a long time, but I mean, it, it could be, yes. I mean, it, it, a burner phone is you, it's, not, it's a phone that nobody want, that you do not want other people to know about. At the time you were talking to Jake at Peterson Road, um, what was the date on that again, the approximate date? Which time? The first time. On April 13th, maybe? It was right before the anniversary of the homicides. Okay, so about one year after the homicides. Correct. And clearly, at that point in time, the Wagners uh, were people of interest in this homicide case, correct? Yes. And everybody knew that, correct? No. Not everybody knew that. I define everybody. Who are you specifically talking about? It was there was gossip in the community that the Wagners were suspects. No. There was not. Not that I'm aware of. Well, you talked to Billy Wagner um, approximately six months after the murders, right? Or the, the agent that was here before. Yes, yes. I, I was just trying to think of the time frame, yes. Yeah, approximately six months after um, the murders, one of your agents who testified this morning talked to Billy Wagner for well over an hour, correct? Correct. All right. And pr other attempts had been made before, con before that interview trying to talk to him, correct? Correct. So at least Billy Wagner knew that law enforcement wanted to talk to him. Yes. And as he said during that conversation, he doesn't like to talk to law enforcement. Except during that interview, correct? Except during that interview. And that seemed to be his viewpoint on the world. Is that fair to say? Not really a friend of law enforcement. I would say that's accurate. If I can have just a moment,
Thank you, Your Honor. I have no further questions. Can you read your act? Yes. Thank you. Special Agent Scheider, you were asked about the interview that was conducted with Billy Wagner in September of 2016, correct? Yes. That was four and a half months after the homicides? Correct. And we all listened to that interview today, correct? Yes. And that was not accusatory at all, was it? No. Nobody said, we think you did this, Billy, and tell us why you did it or if you did it at all? Sure. Was that ever said in the interview? No. Okay. And in fact, it was indicated that they were interviewing friends and families of the victims? Correct. It was an informational interview. Okay. And specifically, when you conducted the May 10th search warrant, did you make attempts to conduct it in a particular fashion? Yes, we did. At that time, we were not aware that the Wagners knew that we were investigating them or had narrowed in on them. So we sent a small team of investigators to conduct that search warrant. And we didn't want to attract a lot of attention. We didn't want the Wagners to know. We didn't want the media to know. Unfortunately, the neighbors saw. I mean, we just couldn't help it. You guys have been up Peterson Road. The road's small. But yes, the intent was to send a small team there and try not to attract a lot of attention. Okay. And in fact, the media didn't learn of that first one, but did learn of the second one, the May 12th one, correct? That is my understanding. I'm not aware of any media being alerted to the first search warrant. Okay. And at some point, once the Wagners had actually moved to Alaska as opposed to just traveled there, at that point, was there some publicity around them as people of interest? At that time, it was publicly, it was made available to the public that we were interested in investigating the Wagners and wanted information on the Wagners, yes. And what specific information were you seeking? I believe the press release was something to the effect of vehicles, firearms. There may have been one other thing that we were asking if anybody had dealt with any of those objects with the Wagners. Okay. But that did not happen until after that May 10th search of Peterson Road. Correct. Correct. And even after the May 12th one. Correct. Okay. I have no other questions. Any further calls? Just a few questions. Sir, just to make sure I understand, BCI knew the Wagners were going to Alaska before they went there? Yes. They told you that? Yes. Two of the Wagners told us that, yes. Two of the Wagners? Yes. Billy and Jane? Correct. So it was no surprise to you that they were going to Alaska? It was a surprise April when I first heard about it, yes. It may have been a surprise the first time, but they did not keep that from you? Correct. You knew as of May 10th at least, or what day did you know? May 9th? Around that time. I thought it was April that Jake told us. I'm sorry, you're right. April when you interviewed Jake near the one year anniversary. Correct. That's when Jake told you, we're going to Alaska. Correct. Nobody hid that, right? Correct. Thank you. No further questions. Anything further from the state? Any further questions? Other than that first indication was that they were going there to visit it. Right. Correct. That first trip on May 10th? Correct. It was a visit scouting trip. Correct. Okay. Thank you. You may step down. Thank you, Your Honor. We're going to break then for the evening. It's 431 on my watch. We'll be going home, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. So again, the admonition is do not discuss this case among yourselves or with anyone else. Do not permit anyone to discuss this case with anyone else. Thank you.
uh, discuss this case with you or in your presence. Do not form or express an opinion concerning this case until it's finally submitted to you for deliberation and verdict. Uh, do not do any research at all concerning this case, either as to the facts or as to the law from any uh, source at all. Do not read, view, or listen to any reports or accounts of this case from any source at all. And that would include, of course, as we've said, the, the Internet, Facebook, other social media sites, or um, newspapers, radio, television, any, any source at all. Do not uh, access any of that. Uh, and uh, do not have any contact with any of the participants in the trial, including parties, counsel, or witnesses. Uh, you'll be leaving your notepads, of course, as you've been doing, on your seat wearing your ba and wearing your badges. Does counsel for either side have anything further before we recess until 9 o'clock tomorrow morning? Nothing. We have nothing, Your Honor. And we are in recess until 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. Assemble at the jury room.